Just like the women, all 40 men will be out on the course. Two rows of 20 to start with the higher ranked athletes in the front and towards the middle. So Pat Vellner, he'll be riding the number one bike and he has a little bit of a history with slow starts. Last year uh, in bike to work, he finished 20th and then back in 2018 and the crit had a mechanical with his bike that forced him towards the pack is back of the pack as well hey, look he just has day one test one woes he's got a 36 a 35th a 35th and a 20th that 35th place finish in 2021 effectively was the reason why he didn't win the 2021 games he's got third twice second twice people think that this is his year this is one of the most important tests for the entire weekend for pat vellner We are underway. Same thing we had for the women as a rolling start. Competition director Adrian Bosman in the red shirt in the lead will start them off and then the race will begin. So Bos and the red will pull off to the side and let the athletes basically get under their way as fast as they can. Yona Koski there on the right side of your screen out front early. Yona Koski is one of the most popular picks to win this test. Koski in bike events for, for, for a first test has gotten third and second. He got third in cycle cross, second in bike to work last year. He had missed in 2018 when they had the crit. But on the flip side is that. Ooh, that's Alex Vino almost wiping out there. Well, we saw how dangerous that first turn was when you have a field of 40 that what happened to Emma Carey in the first heat, but, but back to Koski, this guy just has almost the opposite of Vellner. He has great first events here at the CrossFit Games. Usually there's a mass start, there may be a swim involved, but even with the bike, Koski is one of the best, <laughs> basically, first test athletes we've ever had. Three of his test wins, one of them, event one, 2021, the ocean, the ocean swim in 2016 was towards the front, and then pier paddle in 2015, that was another opening event. And we saw on the women's side is that for the first two laps, if you were in the lead, you were no longer in the lead after the first lap as we saw some athletes maybe come out a little too hot. Sean, one advantage here for the men is that now they have a better idea of about how many laps are on the table, whereas versus the women, they really weren't sure. They, they had a lap test earlier. They thought it would take about six to seven minutes on average for a lap test. But now men know it's like, listen, I got to get seven laps in. So now it's seven laps for time versus 40 minutes of riding out here on the course. Fabian Benito is your leader right now as we're past the two minute mark. His timing is presented by G-Shock, the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. So much tighter here towards the front than it was for the women. And they're opening lap, but we're only two and a half minutes in. Opening lap, the really only thing you can do in the opening lap of these 40 minutes is screw it up. You can either go out too fast, you could crash into somebody, you could derail your bike. Just let this opening lap come to you. Get a feel for the course. It's a different day than what they had on the training ride. They are more isolated, 40-person field. And at the same time, is maybe give yourself a lap to calm down. Fabian Benito is out in the lead. He's a rookie at the CrossFit Games. He's been fighting for years to get here. Is this a wheelhouse test for him? Or is this the rookie jitters and adrenaline? I see Yonikoski talking to them together. Maybe trying to work with Adler and Benito. And there's Cole Sager, who's making his 10th straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. Grover Carl Gubinson and Noah Olsen are the other two men who are doing that here this year. Let's send it out to Mike Arsenault, who's down there on the course. Thank you, Sean Chase. You alluded to Pat Vellner's struggle, so I had a chance to talk to his coach, Michelle Latondra, about the message for this test, and she said, the turns will get better with each and every lap, so it's all about maintaining a good position in the first half and keeping the effort manageable and then pushing to have a great last lap. To put it more succinctly, she said, and I quote, don't be an idiot in the first 25 minutes. <laughs> That's uh, for, for Pat. That's good quality direct coaching. Now, Yonikowski in front of Jeffrey Adler. 
as Benito is sitting back in third now. Men approaching that run portion of this opening lap. Opening lap times for the women were a range of 626. And that main pack's about 646. So again, very tight laps. Let's see how fast the men are coming into this first one. Adler and Koski out front. Adler slightly ahead of Koski. And just talk about Jeff Adler for a second. Is that guy came in as basically the strong guy, the strong kid of the group. And he has worked on his endurance and his skills maniacally over the last three years. And it is showing by his place finishes on the leaderboard. Fifth place last year is his best finish at the CrossFit Games ever with a full field. He's one of those athletes that is is in the mentioning of possibly being you know, on the podium and maybe win the CrossFit Games this year. That's Bailey Martin who is in third place. Martin out of New Zealand. Making his second appearance here at the CrossFit Games. His first as an individual. He actually competed as a team back in 2017 where he took 13th overall. Well, here are your two leaders, Jeff Adler, and Yonikoski wrapping up lap number one. Now with them talking to each other, you can hear Kosk or look at Koski talking to Jeff. Jeff is chirping back. And that's that's the discussion of we talked about the women is like, can we work together? Can we work together to get ahead of this pack? As Adler and Koski are right about 544, 545. Well, Bjorn Carl Gumanson now is in third place ahead of Bailey Martin, who sits in fourth. Cole Sager rounds out the top five after lap number one. So not that you can maintain the you know lap one pace for the entire 40 minutes, but that's a six minute lap. Say you keep that pace, you're looking at about 36 minutes to keep that. Seven laps is probably the most we're gonna see some athletes get. So understanding is like, listen, it's six laps to get to that final cut line before they basically the time gate closes. So now it's six laps for time with the seventh one to finish. So now they have something that they are chasing. They have a, a set amount of work that they're racing to do. And that's much easier to tackle than an arbitrary lap number in a 40 minute time span. Koski taking a look back and Roman Krenikov now on the number four bike has moved into third. Jordan Carl Gubins is still in that lead pack. Number 31 is Spencer Panchik. And now here is the two time defending champ, Justin Medeiros, rounding the corner. You're all right, Sam. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Recover. Recover. Now, that first lap, Velmer Velner is third, sitting in 32nd. Now it's a, just a mass of bodies when it comes to that, but it's still towards the back of the pack. Roman Krenikov is starting to creep up. As he sits in third, Jorben Carl Gumanson is right behind him. Come on, Jeff! Jay Crouch up there as well. Jay Crouch actually has a little, some motocross background. Now, obviously, you're not pedaling. There's not that physical element. But as we said in the, the recipes per success, it's it's the competence. Competence racing on a bike. Confidence racing in these turns. So Jay Crouch having some of that racing experience on a bike to help navigate how he attacks this course. Koski's ahead of Adler right now for the lead with 
Krennikov in third, and I believe that is Jorgen Carl Gumason sitting in fourth ahead of Jay Crouch. Zikowski pulling back on purpose to sit back on now Krennikov's wheel. Now Krennikov is going to try to pass Adler on this turn. And Krennikov has moved into the lead. And he almost biffed it there on the turn. Coming in a little too tight on these switchbacks on the back side of this course. Well, we were talking earlier about the course before we came on air here. And you made a really good point about the turns are really the best opportunity that people will have to pass other riders. It, and that's because there's not a big straightaway on flat ground to outrace anyone on the course. But it's the technical aspect of these turns. There's 22 total turns on the course. 15 of them are a 180 turn. And what you can do is that if you have the technical proficiency to have a good line and a good race, you can actually gain a second on somebody without even having to pedal. Well, if you do that 15 times, that's 15 seconds a lap. Someone else is going to have to bike faster and harder than you to try to catch you. And now the leaders are off for the second time. A moment ago, that lead pack working together. There's Yonikowski looking over his shoulder and allows Adler and Krenikov to pass. And that would, as I was so curious if we were going to see that. And this is a lesson learned from last year, is that last year, the athletes didn't talk to each other. They basically all just try to race each other singled up. Did they learn? Did they adapt? One of the main things you see from CrossFit athletes is their ability to adapt event to event, but year to year as well. So if we can see these athletes communicate and pull away from the rest of the field, that's that maturation in competition we see from one year to the next. Krennikov, Crouch, Adler, and Koski towards the front. Cole Sager, you saw him getting ready to get back on the bike. And now it's Roman Krennikov ahead of Crouch, Koski, Adler, and then Bjorven Carl Gumanson doing what he does, just hanging out there inside the top five. Schedule a no-cost 15-minute evaluation to find out if a Rosti treatment is right for you. Get pain-free. Now available across the U.S. You can scan the QR code to get started. The lap two is down for the leaders. 11.37, Karenikov in the lead. He had a 5.45 split on the first lap. So actually increased his speed on the second one. Jay Crouch has now moved in front of Roman Krennikov. Yonikowski behind Roman. And it's Adler in fourth, Bjorn Carl Gubinson in fifth. And if you have a pace lead group working together, this is exactly what you should see. We shouldn't see one person in the lead the entire time. You stay in this line, you ride wheel to wheel to wheel. Listen, let's just separate ourselves from the other 35 athletes. And on the last lap, we all agree that the gloves are off and we're going to race to the finish line. But each person, 20 seconds max pulling in the front. Everybody else gets a break as Roma Krennikov moves back in the front. The top five have separated themselves here and everyone content to draft behind Roman Krennikov, one of the bigger athletes out there. Third lap here for just about everybody now on the course. Say, why is drafting important? This is one, it helps conserve energy. Not the person in the front. They're taking all the headwind. They're taking all the pace. But if you get within a foot of the other rider, it's anywhere between 15 to 40% energy saved while moving at the same speed. And so if you can just, with, especially with a group of five, how, how valuable it is to be in a large lead group. Hey, I'm going to sit at the front for 20 seconds and then just work to the back. And then for the next minute and a half, 
I'm going to conserve 40% of my energy and keep the same speed. That's what working together at the front chase pack is is for. And we mentioned Felder at the start. He's towards the back here. Along with Jack Farlow and Will Morad. I said after the first lap, he was in 30 seconds. Looks like he's still in that pace, about 6.16 on the first lap. Looks like 6.05 on the second, so not getting slower, but neither is the rest of the field. And look at the lead this front five have. Now, still a lot of time left, 25 minutes left in the first test. And you see front lead bike backing off the pace a little bit. But what you don't want is that you don't want the group to ride your coattails. You're in the lead. You can extend this. Work together. Roman Krennikov, Yonikoski, Alex Vino, Bjorn Carl Gumanson, and Jay Crouch. Oh, that's Jeff Adler, not Alex Vino there in the lead pack. Adler has been towards the top. See Roman leading in the front. It was Koski for a bit, but not much. Roman jumped right in front again fairly quickly. But if you want to see what, what drafting does is Roman's pedaling hard, and you'll see some of the athletes just stop pedaling. Jay Kraut, stop pedaling. Goodmanson, stop pedaling. But it's because that's the benefit of the draft, and the draft gets better the more people you have in line. Right now it's Roman Krennikov who is staying out front. Krennikov made his first in-person appearance at the CrossFit Games last year, finished on the podium in second place. And he won two tests last year. That's three career test wins. The other coming in the 1,000 meter row test from 2020. That was the online portion of the CrossFit Games that year. Athlete that is in the mix of not just podiuming again, but winning the entire theme. He got second last year in what, at minimum, you could say was a tumultuous year for Roman Karenikov, trying to get a visa to come to the United States for the first time ever. Just had a baby boy, left his wife back home to come to the States just to compete here, and then got to meet him for the first time ever at the CrossFit Games last year. Now, he's got to spend an entire year here in the United States training just for this. Let's bring in Mike Arsenal down on the course. Well, Chase, we've been talking about how difficult the run is on these athletes, both the women and the men, and how brutal it is on their quads and their glutes. So is it a matter of just grinning and bearing it, or is there something these athletes can do technique-wise to make it a little bit easier? Is that going harder on the decline, easing off the pedal on the incline, or what would you advise they should do to push through on these run portions? The, the one part is, like, take your break on the declines. That, that's a good opportunity to keep your speed but not keep the same intensity. But we said earlier, it's the technicality of the turns especially the ones that have an incline at the base of the turn. That's where you gain a second, maybe two seconds on the rest of the pack. Jay Crouch has now moved out front. Seventeen thirty to the collective time. The lap time previously was 11.39. So that third lap was faster than the second one. Their fastest lap so far is 5.44. They bumped up to about 5.55 and now brought it down to about 5.50 for that lap. See Jay Crouch leading the front five. You don't want to lose contact. You, like I said, is you get 15 to 40 percent benefit on the draft. You lose contact with about 10 to 10 feet away, which is not a lot of distance. It's going to be hard to make up, especially when four are pulling together, not you. And Jay Crouch making his fourth straight individual appearance here at the CrossFit Games. His best finish was 18th overall in 2020, and his best finish in a test is fifth. He's done that twice. Damn Diane in 2020. 
and then event four in 2021. Now Yonikoski back in front. Koski making his ninth career appearance at the CrossFit Games. His best finish came in 2021 when he finished sixth overall. Yeah, a little distance in these front five. And Koski and Crouch are starting to pull away. Koski and Crouch continue to lead. There is Justin Medeiros on the number 10 bike behind Chandler Smith. Lazar Jukic is behind Medeiros. Justin has used consistency to win his two titles. He only has won one test at the CrossFit Games, but he rarely makes mistakes. In 48 total career tests at the Games, he's finished in the top 10 39 times. Uh, and that's it, consistency is key. That's, that's, I mean, that's the baseline methodology deciding piece of, of a CrossFit athlete, is how consistent can you be across the board, but Medeiros, He's looking a little gas. If you just saw his body language gasping for air, we're just past the halfway point here. Jay Crouch and Yonikoski have separated themselves from Adler, Gumitson, and Krenikov. Yonikoski's leading Crouch. And now, again, we'll see if this is a move to help the tandem. There you go. But there's obviously more is better when it comes to drafting, but if the group isn't collectively working together, find, your, find yourself someone who's willing to work with you. And that might be what we're seeing with Koski and Crouch. Krennikov now in third place in that pack on the right side of your screen. Koski taking a second to grab some water. Trek bike specs has 12 speeds. He's got 12 speeds. Take it off any sweet jumps. <laughs> send, down, send it down to Nikki Brazier with more on that bike. Yeah, guys, I was able to catch up with Chris Hinshaw, who actually did a couple laps in practice on this course, and he told me that, in his opinion, that Trek bike is legit. It felt as though he was riding with a strong tailwind the entire time, and the tires have been filled at a pretty high pressure, which makes traveling over the grass, now very well mounted down, pretty darn fast, which should benefit the more aggressive rider. And he said, unfortunately, this tire pressure also makes riding on the gravel and the dirt a little more squirrely, so the safest area is going to be right in the middle, right down the dirt, as the uh, sides of the track here are where some of the larger rocks have been gathered. Koski and Crouch getting set to close out their fourth lap. And 40 minutes is when that gate will close, and whoever gets past that will race to the finish. There's Jordan Carl Gumanson. Fifth place right now in this test. Gumanson making his 10th straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. He has only finished lower than ninth overall once, and that was his rookie year in 2014. It's Koski. Koski now your new leader with Crash taking second, Adler third, Krennikov fourth, BKG in fifth, so that first place position. Lap five now for the leaders. Less than 17 minutes before we hit that 40 minute mark. And that might be Jeff Adler trying to work his way up into your lead pack. He was stuck in the back three once that lead pack split. And that is Jeff Adler. We're talking to him and his coach, Carolyn Lambre. Few months ago, 
they mentioned that Jeff's training has changed. The focus is no longer let's get to the CrossFit Games and be competitive. It's now let's get to the CrossFit Games and win. There's Jake Douglas. Rookie out of Australia. And it's not too early to mention, Sean, is the value of single place finishes when it comes to point allocation. Because this is potentially going to be, with the talent that we have at the top, one of the closer games finishes. Hard to predict in test one over the course of the weekend, but with the talent that we have at the top, these two or three place finishes, those Ten, eight to 12 point swings from test to test are gonna be so valuable. But then on the horizon, after Friday, we're cutting 10 people. And there's some events that are coming on Saturday that maybe those bottom 10 could succeed in and maybe make that final cut to 20. Jake Douglas being one of those athletes. Koski, Crouch, and Adler, your top three right now on their fifth lap. Prenikov leading Grover Carl Gubitschen for fourth right now. And now it's Adler who has moved into the lead. Adler has finished inside the top five twice in his career at the CrossFit Games, did it in 2020. And then again, last year, has four career test wins. Those mainly coming in strength power tests. Back nine last year is one of the more impressive things I have seen anyone do. No, Roman and BKG in the back still sticking around. Koski is really doing a nice job of drafting off the people in front of him. And, and it looks like, I mean, since the beginning that not only is he doing a good job navigating through that, but a good job almost coaching the group to a certain extent. And that's what you need. You need everyone to work collectively together if you are going to try to work in that position. But maybe have someone in charge of just directing the trio that you have. You see how far ahead the five riders are of the pack. We talked about that in the, the women's test previously with, with Emma Lawson, is that you get to a certain point out of eyesight that you just break the spirit of the people chasing you. Oh, they're too far, I'm not even gonna worry about it. Or, I don't know how fast that group is going, I have no depth to gauge if I'm catching up or losing ground, so they're kind of lost in their own pacing on the course. will be the first man to hop off his bike and complete this approximately 200 meter run. This is not the first time we have seen bikes at the CrossFit Games. The first time was back in 2012. Pendleton won and those bikes were single speed. <laughs> yeah. Didn't see him again until we came here to Madison in 2017 with Cyclocross. We had the road bikes in the crit in 2018. The bike repeater showed up in 2020 out in Morgan Hill, California, and then last year we had bike to work. And of the five athletes in this group, Yonikoski has competed in two of those. Cycle cross, he got third in 2017. Last year, second in bike to work. Could have won the thing, but I don't think he realized that Ricky Garrard even existed on the bike course <laughs> in test one last year. Let's go down to Mike Arsenault. 
Well, Jeff Adler is from Montreal, and for those of you not as familiar with Canadian geography as I am, Montreal is actually built on a hill, Mount Royal, and Jeff has done a number of uh, bike training sessions up and down Mount, Mount Royal, uh, over 200 meters of elevation, nearly 800 feet. So obviously, obviously those training sessions definitely paying off here in test number one. And here comes our top five. And that will be the first man across. Just ahead of Koski and Crouch. Now five laps are down for the leaders. About 10 and a half minutes before that gate will close and we will have that final race of the finish. Krennikov and Gumitson have managed to now close the gap as well as those five riders are tired as tired. Roman Krennikov moving back to the front. Adler, Crouch, Koski, and Bjorben Carl Gumitson. Well, Justin Medeiros is still back in the pack, your two-time defending champion. Not quite sure where he is in relation to the rest of the field, but we'll be keeping an eye on him. It's, it's right there around 17. And there's Pat Velder on the right with Will Morad and Ant Haynes. As it stands right now, Vellner is outside the top 30. And we talked at the beginning is how important it is to just get some points when it comes to trying to podium or win the CrossFit Games, but how valuable or how necessary it is for Vellner to have a good start to the weekend. Pat Felder's no stranger to climbing out of early holes, and it's looking like he's going to have a good to do it again here. Top five now lapping another rider out there. This test is presented by O2 Hydration, the official sports drink of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Find O2 online at drinko2.com and at CrossFit Gyms nationwide and hydrate like you mean it. Now, eight minutes left before the gate closes. And it's Roman Krennikov in front of Jeff Adler and Jay Crouch. Yonikowski sits in fourth, followed by Bjorben Carl Gumanson. Finish time in the last lap of this lead group was right about on the nose six minutes. Earlier, previously that, they've all been sub six. So that was the slowest lap they've had, being the fifth lap, which is no surprise. I mean, to, to speed up constantly through 40 minutes at this intensity of which these athletes are riding at is, is not feasible. But six minutes here, if they can get past the gate, which they will in, in plenty of time, and, and you know, we predicted maybe somewhere around 36 to 37 minutes. But the pack behind them, they may, the majority of them all may make the final lap. So then it's, again, as he said, and that last, you know, lap itself is just a race to the finish line. Look at Yona Kosky. This is the benefit of being in the back of the pack. You're not losing any ground. Take your feet off the pedals, flush out your legs a little bit. Your feet aren't clipped in, so that's one benefit of not having clips is you can just take your feet out and shake it without having to snap back in. The downside is that you don't actually get that full pull of being clipped into a pedal, but these athletes are used to that. Mm -hmm. 
there's just no one within sight other than the athlete that was just lapped of these top five. And now to the run portion. Lap splits for these group. 544, 554, 551, 549, and then a six minute lap on the fifth one. And that gate will close at 40 minutes, and then it's a race to the finish to anybody who gets past that. Roman Krennikov in the lead. Adler swinging out wide here. When you look at that fifth lap, it's like, okay, how do they get their fourth or their second fastest lap on the fourth one and their slowest lap on the fifth one? Outside of fatigue, as you got on the on the fifth lap is when this group of five fractured into two groups. You can move faster with a bigger group. That's why the fifth lap was the slowest one. Krennikov, Kosi, Adler, Crouch, and Bjorben Carl Gumanson. Closing out lap six. Well ahead of the time cut of 40 minutes, but they'll only have this last lap to go, less than five minutes to finish. Meaning, now the race for these five athletes is underway. The question is, is when are they gonna start racing each other? But at the same time, this entire field should be able to make this last lap, save for maybe a handful of athletes. I think if you keep an eye on Yonikoski, he might be the guy that starts this thing off. I feel like he's really run a smart race here. Conserving some energy and... I wouldn't be surprised if Roman went first and Koski, who like you said, has had a Great race so far, they, uh, as we say that, Koski pulls up ahead. But Roman has been the one that has jumped ahead of the pack at random moments in this top five. But as you said, Koski has been riding this group and leading this group for the last 36 minutes. Now Yona Koski increasing some speed on the left. On the right, Medeiros and Fellner right next to each other. On the left to Jonah Koski, taking a look back at Roman Krennikov, followed by Jake, probably Jeff Adler, pardon me, Jay Crouch, and then Bjorven Carl Gubinson. So Koski, who has been content to <coughs> ride the tire of the men with him in that pack towards the front, as he now sees Roman Krennikov move back into first, as Krennikov and Koski are starting to pull away from Adler, Crouch, and Gubinson. Not by much, though. It's a long lap, six minutes of hard racing. Koski looks like he might be thinking about trying to pass Roman on that turn. And honestly, what I would do in Koski's position is do what you've been doing for the last six laps, is that if Roman wants to go out, just go with him. You don't need to beat him halfway through the lap. Where that last part's gonna be. Maybe just stay on his wheel as long as you can until you get to that run transition. Possibly make a move there. But it's out of that run transition, straight away to the finish line, downhill the whole way, up shift as high and as quick as you can once you get onto the bike and just race to the finish line. The Roman Krennikov with two minutes to go before that gate closes. So this should be the final lap and the final race to the finish. That pack of five starting to tighten a little bit here. See, Roman Karenikov is definitely has upped his gears. Now Jeff Adler and that has as well. And it slowed him down in turn, but like if you look at Karenikov's pedal strokes, it's much slower than the other two. Jeff Adler, look at the look at the cycle rate, the RPMs he's going. That means he's in a lower gear. He can 
get a faster cycle. That's so valuable in these tight turns on the back part of this course. If you're in a higher gear, it's a slow turn. It's what we said at the very beginning of this race. Well, Jeff Adler is in the lead. Kaike Cervani is the man who's getting past there and kind of bolishing things up for that lead pack. One minute to go. So this will be the final race to the finish line. Adler leading Yonikoski. Roman Krennikov sits in third, followed by Jay Crouch and Bjorben Carl Gumitson. And now Koski making a move on Adler. Koski back in front. Koski will be the first man to the run portion of the course. So coming into this run portion, downshift your gears to a smaller gear so there's less resistance on the pedal because once you get to the run, and when we get back on the bike, you don't want it to be in a high gear. You want it to be in low and then upshift as quick as you can on that downhill finish. Yona Koski trying to hang on to this lead now. Pick up his fourth career test win. And his third in the opening test at the CrossFit Games. He also won event one in 2021 and peer paddle back in 2015. The gate has now closed. Koski getting set to make the transition. Here comes Adler in second. And it's Crouch and Krenikov fighting for third, but it's going to be Yonikoski with a great push at the end here to separate himself from the four men chasing him, and Yonikoski picks up the win. Adler is going to get second. Crouch edging out Krenikov for third, and it's going to be Bjorven Carl Gubinson taking fifth. Just a masterful tactical race by Yonikoski. Crossing that finish line. And there is Gervin Carl Gubinson, his 10th straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. Has only finished lower than ninth once during that span. Ike Servani is going to get waved in, but he's a lap behind. And there is Yonikoski. Trying to recover after his fourth career test win. Now, Yellow Hosta out of Belgium leading this pack. Moritz Fiebig is on the number 19 bike. That's James Sprague on the 25. And it's going to be Yellow Hosta. He's going to get a top 10 finish. Lawrence Fiebig. And Dallin Pepper coming across. James Sprague is in as well. There's Brett Fakowski. Spencer Panchik with a late push. He is across. As more athletes finishing here. Martin looking over his shoulder and Cole Sager trying to catch up. Bailey Martin is in. Cole Sager's in with Chandler Smith. Holds off Alex Vino at the finish. And there is Pat Vellner, who is going to once again have to dig out of an early hole here. And it's not his ability to do that. That's what he does. Not necessarily, uh, yeah, he digs himself a hole, but he climbs himself back. And the issues previous years when they had major cuts, like in 2019, that was a detriment to his comeback on the weekend. But it's the points you lose 
and the inability to basically close that gap after the course of the weekend. Noah Olson just got across the finish line. Sam Kwan is in. Sam Cornwaye, Will Morad. Luke Parker. Colt Mertens. David Shirunke is the man behind Pat Vellner as Vellner is done. There is Medeiros, who's now just coming across. And I don't know if he blew up or maybe something happened to the bike because he had something happen between lap four and lap five. He's about mid-pack on lap four and almost dead last after lap five. Cole Greasehaber. Lazar Jukic is just getting back on the bike for the final time to close out his test. Jukic making his third straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. Both times inside the top 10, ninth in 2021, and then finished eighth last year. Jukic is just going to coast across the finish line as he is in no danger of surrendering his current position. That's Archer Semenov. Will make his way across the finish line. It's just about every athlete he's gotten across. Well. Close out this opening test. 20 men in this second and final heat. They're all trying to chase down Spencer Panchik, who put up a time of 15 minutes, 20.83 seconds. Justin Medeiros, your two-time defending champion, is out there on the field. He had a slow start. At 22nd or 29th place finish in the first heat, it might have been to a bike malfunction. So one of the lowest place finishes he's had in his entire career. Yellow Hosta is a rookie out of Belgium. He had a much different experience at test number one. He absolutely did. A top 10 finish in that test. Three event wins in semifinals and one of the most excited people everyone is here to watch for this rookie. Stand by. Second and final heat is underway. 15 minutes, point two zero eight three seconds. Is your time to beat? 510 pounds on the pig, about 231 kilos. And all the men here in the second heat. Our groups tightly together for the lead. No one has separated himself yet. Well, the big thing you're looking for on the first 10 is not necessarily who's doing it the fastest, but with the least amount of effort. And it's going to be an indicator of how these 10 are going to be on the back half of this test. Who's moving well? Who's struggling? Who's effortless as they navigate flip for flip for these 10 reps? Moritz Fiebig on the far side of the field. Now center your screen. He's your leader by a rep over everybody else. Ten total here. And then it's on to the pull-up bar for 25 chest of our pull-ups. And more to the top part of your screen. Struggled with that last one, a little bit out of position, but he gets super close. But is how fast he gets, he skips his hip. He, sk he skipped the hip part. He just power cleaned the pick. Fiebig will be the first man to the pull-up bar, but not by much. As just about everybody else is done. Pat Vellner has now just finished up his pick flips. Justin Medeiros is still out there. Well, here's the thing that we saw from Justin in test one, and I actually talked to Chris Henshaw about this yesterday. 
is that these athletes need to understand how much the ride is going to take out of them for the rest of the weekend. And Medeiros looked like one of those athletes that just bonked out there on the race course. So the ability to recover, refuel, and get ready for a test like this is one of the big components that are outside the test themselves. Roman Krenikov is now your leader. He already completed his 25 test of our pull-ups. But for more on Justin Medeiros, let's go down to Mike Arsenault. Well, I had a chance to speak to Adam Knight for uh, Justin Medeiros' coach between test one and test number two. And Chase, you mentioned during test one that Justin was in a good position that it seemed like he fell off. He actually fell twice on the same lap. That's what led to his uh, 27th place finish in test number one. But as you mentioned here in test number two, hasn't rebounded quite yet from that performance. 27th is the worst finish of Justin Medeiros' game's career. Roman Krenikov continues the lead, followed by Will Morad and Lazar Jukic. 85 is the number they're looking to hit before they will move on to the 100 wall balls. Roman Krenikov, who made his in-person debut at the CrossFit Games last year, finished second overall. Off to a strong start. Not only earlier today, but now here in test number two. Through 70 of the 270 total repetitions, he's got 15 remaining on the toes to bar. He's got that slow, big cycle on the toes to bar. The only downside is that time under tension. You're hanging onto the bar longer. Your cycle rate's a little bit slower. But the pros there is that you're using a lot more musculature to get the toes to bar done. So the movement itself isn't as difficult to do rep per rep. It's just a little slower. Lazar Jukic on the left side of your screen is trying to hold off Will Morad for second place. Lord Spiebig and Dallin Pepper right now in fourth and fifth. 18 minute time cap here. And Jig is at 35th place finish. And test one this morning. Krenikov is now onto the wall balls and he will not even hesitate. He picks that thing right up and gets to work. See ya. A couple strategies here on the wall ball shots. Set to 20, set to 25. And you just let the wall ball dictate a little bit of your set. If you find yourself maybe jumping a little bit or pushing a little too hard to get the last five reps, it's beneficial to just maybe cut five off, cut your sets down. And the wall ball shot is not where you're gonna make a huge move on the field, and you definitely don't want to put yourself into a deficit working your way back to the toes bar. Approaching the five minute mark here. As Roman Krenikov continues to lead, he's through 25 of those 100 wall balls and counting. G-Shock is giving you the chance to win a new G-Shock watch, a CrossFit Level 1 seminar, and more than $400 in CrossFit swag. Scan the QR code on your screen right now. Terms and conditions apply. Lazar Jukic and Will Morad continue to hold steady behind Roman Krenikov. Brett Fakowski, meanwhile, is creeping up. He sits in fifth place. And Justin Medeiros is towards the back of the pack right now. Yeah. Mike talked about the two wrecks he had on the course. I don't know if this is a product of just being smoked from the test earlier or maybe some sort of potential injury from the wrecks themselves. This is very unlike Justin Medeiros. Brent Fakowski right now is in fifth place battling with another Canadian, Sam Cornoyer, for that spot. 
The trying to gain ground on Dallin Pepper. Bukowski, that classic sweep of the arms, and a reason why it does that, it keeps his tempo pace on the wall ball shots, but the other is that it, it allows his arms to drop, shake out for a half a second and come back up, versus, say, holding your arms straight in front of you the entire time. It'd be like working out, but even if you just held your arms in front of your face for a minute, that's a fatiguing element. You let him drop, lets your arms relax for a second, and he brings it back up in time to catch the ball again. Roman Krennikov continues the lead. He's through 70 of his 100 wall balls. He has a four rep lead on Lazar Jukic for first place right now. Krennikov coming off a fourth place finish earlier this morning in the opening test ride. Talked about earlier making his in-person debut at the games last year. It was also the first time that he got to meet his newborn son. Top two on the screen, Lazar Jukic on the left. Roman Krennikov on the right. Fred Fikowski's now moved into third. Yeah, something interesting with Lazar on the left is he's doing sets of five, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. You see these other athletes may be doing big sets, sets of 20, sets of 10, taking a 10 to 15 second break. Lazar, set of five, ball settles, puts his hands on, picks it back up again, and goes into the next set. Roman Krennikov now in his final rep, and he is done. He will make the turn. Back to the pull-up bar for 50 more toes to bar. 235, that's the next mark that Roman Krennikov is looking to hit. Scoring hat on top of the screen. The leader's name will be on the far left. And the number in the white box will indicate how many repetitions that man has completed. The number in the white box next to everybody else's name will indicate how many reps they trail the leader. Jason Hopper is moving on to the toes to bar. Looks like Sam Cornwaye is done as well. Will Morad chalking up. Here comes Pat Velder. Velder right now in fifth place in the heat. Well, Velder needs a big, big finish here in this test. Starting the day off in a 20. A 27th place finish this morning on the ride. But Vellner always has a bounce back event. Usually it's here at the North Park. And he does it in dramatic fashion. It's either bottom 30, and then he comes back with a, with a test win. Lazar Jukic is now moved into first place ahead of Roman Krennikov. A lot of athletes with those grips on their hands as they work through these toes to bar. And Bear Complex is giving viewers of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games 20% off site wide. You can head to bearcomplex.com to redeem that offer. Jason Hopper now sits in third place as Roman Krennikov is trying to retake the lead from Lazar Jukic. Pat Vellner is in fifth, neck and neck with Cornway and Morad. Vellner's about 30 reps in to those 50 toes of bar where Jukic Krennikov about five reps left each. Vellner in that blue shirt, center of your screen. 235, that's the number that Jukic and Krennikov are closing in on, and then it's 25 chest of bar pull-ups for them before they head back to the pig for 10 final flips. The first round of 25 chest of bar pull-ups, Jukic did it in about 49 seconds, Krennikov 39 seconds. 
as they're only separated by six seconds at the moment. And Jason Hopper there on the middle of the box on the right side. And now Justin Medeiros is the last man on the wall balls. This is not what anyone expected to see right now. Absolutely not, Sean. And he's moving well. Doesn't seem any physical ailments here. But just the fatigue, like you said, is just sitting down in a staring contest with the med ball in between sets. You just look at that body language. Medeiros is now moving back to the pull-up bar for his toes to bar, but we have a long way to go here. But two finishes towards the bottom. That is hard to make up with this field. We, we said it coming in. There's about five or six guys that are all in contention for podium spots and to win here. And one of them is that man, Roman Krennikov, onto the pig for the final time. Lazar Jukic right behind him. This has been the fight for the lead this entire heat, pretty much. Time to beat belongs to Spencer Panchik. 15 minutes, 20.83 seconds. Jukic needs a good finish. After this morning. And here comes Pat Velder. Velder now in third place. And now Jason Hopper is off as well. First set of 10 pig flips. Krennikov, Jukic, and, Ve and Hopper were all about 115 with Velner eight seconds behind them. But as we said, every heat so far, there's a big difference between the first 10 flips and the last 10 flips. Brent Fikowski is off. He's in that dark tank top and white shorts. Jason Hopper now moves into third. Fikowski right to work. Will Morad is getting set to start his final set of pig flips. And here comes Sam Cornway. Krennikov and Jukic dead even here. Now five flips remaining for both of them. Look out for Brent Fikowski. Velner has now tied Fikowski and Hopper. Morad creeping up and Cornwaye as well. And Roman Krennikov. Has three left, Jukic has three left. Fikowski has moved solidly into third place ahead of Velner and Morat. Roman's found it. Roman's found his rhythm. Two reps left for Roman Krennikov. Final rep for Roman Krennikov. And start printing the leader's jersey with that man's name on it. He's gonna win test two. Lazar Jukic is going to come across. Brent Fikowski looking to finish third in the heat. And maybe third place in the test. And Brent, who finished 10th at the bike, could be in a top three position going into the third test tonight. And Fikowski is in. Jukic de desperately needed that for points, but for Krakowski's fight to get back on the podium, that was huge. Top of your screen is Moritz Fiebig. He did really well on this implemented start, and now Fiebig is gonna get in behind Fikowski and ahead of Velder. And now Velder is across. And a much better result for Pat Velder, as that will be good enough for fifth in the heat sixth place in the test as Sam Cornoyer is across. Will Morad on his final flip. And Morad is done. Two minutes to go before we hit that 18 minute time cap. Jay Crouch down in lane 19. He and Hopper are leading. Meanwhile, this on the right side is pretty shocking. Justin Medeiros 
has yet to get off the pull-up bar. But he's also right next to Sam Kwan, who got fourth last year. And Jason Hopper has finished. Now we cut down to 30 after oh, tomorrow. Man. Just something to keep in the back of your mind if this slow start for Justin Medeiros, if he's not able to correct this tonight. Olsen getting underneath the pig, trying to flip it and get it done. And tonight with that gymnastic Olsen, skills test, I mean, anything can happen with that type of execution-based test. And Sean, it's wild to think that you're talking about the two-time back-to-back champ just trying to make the first 30 cut, depending on what happens tonight. We'll get a long way to go. But he had his career worst finish in the prior test as Noah Olsen and Luke Parker race across the finish line. But Medeiros is possibly staring at his next worst career finish, if not his worst career finish in this test. Finishes, 30, seconds. 30 seconds to go before we hit the 18 minute time cap. Alex Vino with one final flip. And he is in. And it's Heinrich Hapalainen who sneaks across with a couple seconds to spare. And Yonikowski, who won test one, he's going to get capped. And Justin Medeiros is going to get time capped as well. Ten men here on the competition floor. Justin Medeiros will be in lane number 10. And for more on him, here's Mike Arsenault. Well, as mentioned, Justin fell twice in event in test number one, and that shook him up both physically and mentally. So he wasn't feeling himself for the rest of test one and test number two. We're back indoors, air conditioning. We'll see if he has a better performance here in test number three. You can see Justin a little bit marked up there on his chest from those two spills that he took in test number one. Final heat is underway. Cole Greasehaber has the top time at 347.89 seconds. And Justin Medeiros is towards the front here in the opening portion of this test. Velner Krenikov and Jason Hopper do not take a break and go right into that set of freestanding handstand push-ups. Their heads just need to touch the mat and come back up. If they come off their hands at any point between the yellow lines, they got to retreat and start that section again. So Medeiros is towards the front here in this heat as Jason Hopper tried to go unbroken and he falls. Roman Krenikov, your overall leader in the white jersey, looks to continue his great day one. He leads here going into the final section. Each section on the floor will count for one repetition, and then there are 16 pullovers on the pull-up bar, and then four more sections on the way back for 24 total scored repetitions. And Roman Krenikov will be the first man to the pullovers as Pat Vellner takes the spill. Justin Medeiros and Noah Olson, opposite ends of the floor. Medeiros on the bottom, Olson on the top in the blue shorts. They are onto the pull-up bar. Roman Krenikov in the red and white, your leader after two tests, was two seconds behind the pace set by Cole Greasehaber in the previous heat. Greasehaber ended up going 13 and three on these 16 pullovers. We just saw Roman break it five. Well, Haven is the official gym bag of the Noble CrossFit Games. You can scan the QR code on your screen for more information. But Justin Medeiros and Noah Olson now fighting for the lead here in this heat. Medeiros through 17 of the 24 total repetitions, the leader's name in the heat will be on the far left side of your screen on the scoring hat. Justin Medeiros just went unbroken. No one, no one has done that today yet. And Medeiros in the lead here, and he has got to score some points to start working his way up the overall standings. At semifinals, Justin Medeiros was not having the competition that he wanted. 
And then it came to an event that had pirouettes and handstand walks and inverted handstand push-ups. And he went out and set the best time in the entire world. This is Justin's time to chip back out of that hole he dug for himself earlier today. Time to beat is in the bottom left-hand part of your screen. Justin Medeiros failed his first attempt to get back over these steps. He's got to get both hands over to the yellow line. He does that. Now he can come off his hands. Noah Olsen has been falling back now as Roman Krennikov has moved into second. Pat Vellner is fighting Olsen for third right now. Olsen's on the left side of your screen. This is the 10th straight time that Noah Olsen has made it to the Classic Games as Medeiros manages uh, his to oh. save that <laughs> and now is able to kick down. That is big. Okay, so one thing here, Sean. When you're racing a field like this, sometimes an athlete puts at a time that nobody's going to beat. And where the mistake lies in some athletes is that they try to be that guy. Justin needs to be careful. It's okay to maybe let Cole take the win if that means he gets a solid second place. You don't want to put yourself in a position that you try to beat this guy and then it gives you a fifth because of it. It looks like Grease Saber's time is going to hold. So he'll pick up his first career test win at the CrossFit Games. Now Justin Medeiros has one section remaining. Roman Krennikov sits in second place. And it's Pat Vellner in third. Now here goes Medeiros, final section. Up and over for Medeiros, and he ain't dead yet. 403.63 seconds for Justin Medeiros. That will be good enough for a second place finish in the test. Huge 97 points for the two-time defending champ. And now Roman Krennikov trying to get the crowd behind him as he's holding off Pat Vellner. Vellner on the left side of your screen out of Canada. Krennikov is in. And Roman Krennikov with another solid performance here in test number three. That will be good enough for fifth place for 40.23. And now here comes Pat Vellner. Vellner, sixth place in the test, 448.38 seconds. And now Noah Olson, your leader on the floor, two minutes to go before we hit the seven minute time cap. Noah Olson, one of three men in the field who is making his 10th straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. Cole Sager and Jordan Carl Gumitz in the other two. Olsen gets safely through that final section. Five twenty-nine point one two seconds for Noah Olsen. That will be good enough for twelfth place in Test Three. Adler. Jeff Adler in the gray shorts, trying to be the next man across the finish line. Battling with Dallin Pepper. And Adler is in. He'll take fifth place in the heat, 15th place in the test, just under six minutes, 557.78. Dallin Pepper and Lazar Jukic still on the floor, along with Sam Quan and Brent Fakowski. Pepper makes it. 30 seconds, Adley, 30 seconds. Is in lane two. Brent Fakowski and Sam Quant and Jason Hopper all on the floor. Hopper is still back on the pull-up ball. Jeez. Final 10 seconds before we hit the time cap. Kelsey's just going to run out of time. Justin Medeiros will finish second place in the test. He wins the heat, 403.63 seconds. He will add 97 points to his total. That is huge as he will 
move his way up the overall standings. Second and final heat. They are all trying to chase down Jack Farlow's top time of 12.54.31 seconds. The leaders will be right in the middle of the field in lanes 9, 10, and 11. Jay Crouch is in second place, and if you had that picked, you are related to Jay Crouch. And for more on him, <laughs> here's Mike Arsenal. Well, Sean, you should have seen the megawatt smile on Jay's face when I reminded him that he was sleeping on the day one podium position. He's been doing CrossFit. His first Open was at 14 years old back in 2013. Didn't have a great performance last year. What the difference was this year, he spent three weeks in Nashville to acclimate to the heat and humidity. That's what he's attributing to his great performance through one day of competition. And there is Jay Crouch. So far, nothing outside of the top 10 and two finishes of fourth or better. Next to him, Roman Krennikov and then Spencer Panchik, your top three. Well, Jay Crouch, 28th last year in Alpaca. Spencer Panchik, 24th last year. Roman won the whole thing, so they've got their work cut out for him today. Now, two guys who are looking to make up some ground as well are right next to each other in lanes 13 and 14. We'll keep an eye on Brent Fakowski and Patrick Velder. We are underway. First sled push. Again, 500. 44 pounds, 246 kilos that they are pushing right now. What I like in this sled push right at the start, it's like you're in a boxing ring and they ring the bell and you get punched in the face in the first second. And then you see how people react to that. We've seen people push the sled, not move. Game plan needs to change immediately. Well, Dallin Pepper and Roman Krennikov are the two men in front. And they will be the first to unload their first two 70 pound kettlebells. So they lighten the load a little bit and we'll start on their next push. Pepper is about a sled length ahead of Roman Krennikov right now. You see Pepper, he has his hands on the handles, jamming his arms up together in that base position, which can greatly fatigue the shoulders and grip going into the legless rope climbs, where Roman on the backside has his shoulders on and his hands drop to the side. So it's gonna be less of an impact on his upper body going into the rope climbs for this first round. Jorgen Carl Gubinson has crept up now, and he is on the lead pace along with Krennikov and Pepper. BKG last year, 12th place in Alpaca. And there you have it, right side of your screen is Pepper, hands high, really compressing that upper body position where Roman arms dropped, right? So not a lot of blood getting pumped in the arms, not a lot of blood or fatigue going into the forearms. So we'll see how We've seen athletes change their technique as the test unfolds. Gubitz and Krennikov and Pepper will be the first men done. And now James Sprague is there as well. Brent Fikowski finishing up. And Roman Krennikov, along with Dallin Pepper, heading to the rope. Jorgen Carl Gubitz taking a swig of water, and he's going to get started on his first two legless rope climbs. Here comes Brent Fikowski in the middle in the blue shorts. We said that Roman won Alpaca last year, which is the beginning of his campaign to get that second place position. In fact, that was when Roman actually scored more points than anyone in the back half of the weekend. And when he was asked about how would you have done with the climbs, he would have been better. <laughs> Now hands for this seated, feet must leave before the hips. Hands must start below the start line. At the top, both hands clearly over, and then control the descent until hands get below, and then you can drop. At the five rep mark, Krennikov will be done. And Krennikov is in the lead here. Brent Fakowski has now moved into second. You think about the technical aspect of these seated climbs, and you, then you talk about Brent Fikowski, and he's notorious for meticulously dissecting a legless rope climb or a hybrid rope climb. A couple years ago, we saw him do that leg wrap that no one did on the hybrids, where it's legless until the leg. So Fikowski has been working on these. And honestly, if you're an athlete that have games aspirations and you have not been practicing this test in particular, then I think you need to go back to the drawing board in your games prep. 17 is the number that Roman Krennikov is looking to hit. And then he will load up his sled and push it forward to the next line. Brent Fikowski staying even with Roman Krennikov. 
Looking strong. Said last year, Fikowski was 11. Pat Vellner actually took third. As you said in the previous heat, Jack Farlow's 12.54. The winning time last year was 6.23. That is how different this test is this year. Roman Krennikov will be the first man to start his sled push back down the field, now loaded with two 70-pound kettlebells. 31 kilos each. Again, that sled is 124 pounds, 56 kilos. And here comes Brent Fikowski now in second behind Roman Krennikov. And Fikowski using that same arm position that Krennikov is using. Usually when it comes to something technical, if I'm on the field, I, I just, I'll just peek over. <laughs> just look what Brent's doing. I was like, doing. what's Brent doing over there? All right, maybe I'll try that. Here comes Pat Velder, who is now in a fight for third with Dallin Pepper. As Pepper passes him. Felder's going to fall back to fourth, and Bjorn Carl Gubison is pressuring him. Yeti, the official cooler and drinkware of the Noble CrossFit Games, head to yeti.com to learn more. Roman Krenikov is on his first of two road climbs on the second of three sets that he has to complete on that implement. We talked about the recipes being no missed climbs. And sometimes it's hard to judge how your grip is going to respond rep to rep on the legless climbs. And it, it's just, it's hard to do, but it's more beneficial to maybe it's like if you're unsure, rest an extra 10 seconds more than you had planned to versus get three quarters of the way up the rope and realize you started too soon. Brent Fikowski getting set to start his second and final rope climb. It's that leg swing from Fikowski on the right, and that's just to gain some momentum. Well, the women are coming up next, and we will have the six-time fittest woman on earth in the booth with us. Tia Toomey will join us for the first heat of the women's alpaca coming up here in a little bit. Now, Roman Krennikov and Brent Fikowski neck and neck. Brent Fikowski in sixth place overall. He was 10th in ride, the opening test, finished, then finished third in the pig chipper, but in the inverted medley, he was tied for 23rd. So trying to get back on track here and move himself closer to a podium spot. And that's a hard, uh, that's a hard placing to judge because it was just so skill based that you know a, a little misstep here could be five to ten places. I think Fikowski actually missed at the very end of the last implement, lost about thirty to forty seconds, and a couple people passed him. Well, the thirty-two rep mark is when Krenikov and Fikowski will be able to load up their sled with two more kettlebells and push it forward, and they'll go back to start round three. 47 total scored repetitions. Well, Vellner's making a move along with Pepper and Adler. And the one thing with Vellner, great at pulling, great gymnast, strong, but that overhead pressing fatigue has always been a little bit of an issue for him coming down to this. And now we don't have a, a lot of upper body pressing, but you do have a lot of upper body interference with the sled push, with the clean and jerks, especially with the legless climbs. So him managing that work and just keeping him out of the red is going to be something that Pat just needs to be very aware of. Fakowski, that was a smart move from him. As he dropped him to the ground, he put them on the sled. And now Brent Fakowski, because of that great transition, has taken the lead from Roman Krennikov. Good and sled flat. It's not bobbing up and down with each step. Nice and flat to the bottom. Well, Fikowski is done. Krenikov is done. And now back to the Zeus rig for two final rope climbs. Pat Vellner is now loading his sled. He looks to stay in third place here in the heat. Time to beat again from Jack Farlow in heat number one. 1254.31 seconds. Dallin Pepper is back on the sled. Now Pepper has overtaken Velder for third as Fikowski and Krenikov head back to the rope. 
As Allen Pepper solidly in third place as Bellner took a break. Now Jeff Adler has started his sled push. Bellner stopping again. But Bellner's actually, I think that's a strategic break for Bellner so they doesn't redline a little bit. He's been doing that. And when it comes to sled pushes themselves is that maybe you feel when your legs really start to burn, I'm just going to take a break, let it flush out, and then move back into the press. Those, those look more like strategic breaks for Vellner than fatigue breaks. Krennikov and Fikowski both getting to work on their first of their final two road climbs at the same time. Fikowski done just ahead of Krennikov. Here comes Dallin Pepper back to the rope. Vellner working his way back, as is Jeff Adler. This last climb, so important between Vikowski and Krennikov. When to go, are you gonna go? Do I go with you? Reminds me of the old legless in uh, 2013 with Rich, Troyan, and Hendren. Maybe do a little fake out. Here goes Roman Krennikov. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. Krennikov got there. And Roman Krennikov back in the lead ahead of Brent Fikowski, who has yet to get on that crash pad. Krennikov taking a look over his shoulder to see where Fikowski is. And Roman's going to take his time getting back to his final 12 kettlebell clean and jerks. Bukowski still has not started his climb. So Roman Krennikov has a little more than two minutes to chase down Jack Farlow's top time. But more importantly for him, he is leading everybody who is immediately behind him in the overall standings and now looks to tighten his grip on that top spot on the leaderboard. Now Fikowski, meanwhile, is on his final rope climb, as is Pat Velner. So Velner has closed the gap with Fikowski a little bit here. And the no rep for Pat Velner in the oh, background. Man. He did not show control on the way down. That is going to be costly for Pat Velner. Fikowski doing his best Ace Ventura 2 impression. <laughs> Six rope climbs are too much. Well, Krennikov is halfway through his final set, and he got right to work as soon as Brent picked up those kettlebells. Forty-seven total scored repetitions here, and then that final sled push. Well, Krennikov is done. Oh. He's got a minute. And Roman Krennikov is halfway home. Takes a break. Dallin Pepper has now made it to the kettlebells for the final time, as has Bjorg and Carl Gubinson. He'll be bottom of your screen. And Pat Vellner still has another rope climb to go, but Roman Krennikov, second win in three events, and Roman is reigning right now. Fifth career test win for Roman Krennikov and 100 more points as he is locking down the top spot in the overall standings. Now here comes Brent Fikowski. This is big for Brent. A lot of the athletes he's trying to leapfrog towards the podium are struggling in this test. Jake Crouch and, Sa and Spencer Panzik, pardon me, as Fikowski is in are the men in second and third. And they're way towards the back here in this heat. Spencer might be at. But Pat Vellner, meanwhile, is just 
run into just all kinds of problems here on this rope climb. That's his third attempt that he has failed. And Vellner is in eight. Bukowski is sitting in six. Panchek has about half his last clean and jerks to go, so he's close. But Crouch is not close. Feibig is not close. Dallin Pepper is now in. Here comes Bjorven Carl Gubinson. So Pepper will take third in the heat, fourth in the test. And there goes Bjorven Carl Gubinson. He is done. He's got to get across the finish line. Now Jeff Adler, meanwhile, is getting set to finish up as well. So Krennikov is your winner at 1234.59 seconds. Gubinson will take sixth in the test at 1423.84. Now Adler is across, and now Chandler Smith getting set to finish. And for Adler, great finish for him last year. Adler struggled. He got 16th out of 30, by the way, that were taking this test at the time. So bottom half. So a top 10 finish for Adler is big. And Chandler Smith is now in. He'll take ninth place in the test, 1449.37 seconds. Watch out for Mertens, lane 20. Yella Hosta is in, Mertens is in, Vellner now in all kinds of trouble. He could get capped. Vellner, eighth place overall with 196 total points. At back-to-back sixth place finishes after a 27th in test number one as Spencer Panchik comes in, but Vellner's going to be towards the back of the pack here in test four. Noah Olsen trying to get across. And there's Yonikowski, the man who won test number one for the third time in his career at the CrossFit Games. And now two minutes to go before we hit the time cap. <laughs> Noah Olsen trying to just will that sled across the finish line. And Pat Vellner, meanwhile, the cheer that you just heard from the crowd, just made that final rope climb. Come on, Madison, with about 90 seconds remaining. You have Noah Olsen. And here goes Noah Olsen. Olsen is in. 10th straight appearance at the CrossFit Games for Noah Olsen. Closes out with a time of 1640.05 seconds. Jay Crouch and Lazar Jukic are the two men on the sled right now. And Sam Cornway is out there as he starts to work his way to the finish line. And go back to Vikowski. All these finishes are great for him. Cornway was in fifth. Spencer a third, Jay second, Moritz Fabig fourth. And 30 seconds to go before we hit the time cap. So Jukic gets across the finish line. Jay Crouch is looking like he might get time capped, and Pat Velder is going to get capped as well. I think Bailey Martin just sneaked in. Eight one hundredths of a second to spare. But Roman Krenikov, his second test win. 1234.59 seconds. Here's your start list. Ten men on the floor for this final heat. Jeff Adler will be in lane number nine, 
He's only 31 points out of second place. And for more on him, let's go down to Mike Arsenault. Thank you, Sean. If you're new to the sport of fitness, you may be watching the CrossFit Games and thinking this is unattainable. These athletes are superhuman. Well, back in 2017, Jeff Adler and his coach, Carolyn Lambre, were actually volunteers for the media and the events team. And now six years later, he's competing for a spot on the podium. It took a lot of hard work, a lot of perseverance, but it is possible. Maybe a volunteer here this weekend might be competing in the CrossFit Games in 2029. Chandler Smith right now, seventh place overall. Finally. Welcome Finally. back to the CrossFit Games and living up, like you said, to that potential that I think a lot of people know he has. It's the expectations, though, that he needs to manage. There's your overall leader, Roman Krenikov, who may pull the handles off of this thing. <laughs> may know his way around a skier or two. What Roman did last year on the swim test, just hammering, putting up numbers on a skier. I didn't know were actually registered, could like could come up on a screen. The question mark showed up on the display. <laughs> well, everybody on the lead pace right now. Not a lot of separation. Dallin Pepper and Brent Fukowski, Jeff Adler as well. Yonikoski's been towards the front. And it's really, sorry, Sean, the, this first 30 is the only part you don't need to crush yourself with. We've seen some different strategies so far. Mertens not coming off the ski first, and then what he could do on the sandbag after that. Once we get to the bag, now it's the race. Well, Dallin Pepper is your leader, but just by a fraction. We need about what Dallin Pepper did in the semifinals on the final test and a sandbag. And here you go. Everybody done it pretty much the same time. 30 squats at 200 pounds. <laughs> 90 kilos in that bag. Colton Mertens does have the top time. 4 minutes 30.06 seconds. Roman Krenikov is towards the front here. Schedule a no-cost 15-minute evaluation to find out if a Rosti treatment is right for you. Get pain-free. Now available across the U.S. Scan the QR code to get started. Oh, Sean, I miss the days when a 150-pound sandbag was heavy. <laughs> Those are good times. Roman Krenikov is slightly ahead of Sam Corlea right now. Jeff Adler is up there as well, along with Dallin Pepper and Chandler Smith. This group extremely close here in this first set of sandbag squats. 30 total reps at the 60 rep mark. They'll go to the next skier for 20 calories. The leader's name will be on the far left on the top of your screen in our scoring hat, and the number in the white box next to that man's name will indicate how many reps he has completed. Roman Krenikov is through 60 of the 100 total score repetitions, and he is in front here, and here comes Dallin Pepper and Chandler Smith. Top of your screen. At bottom of your screen, it's Adler and Kornwaye. Now here comes Jorba Carl Gubitz and Brent Fikowski. Lead Spencer Panchik is the only man still on the bag. Look at Brett Fikowski, right side of your screen, is actually lifting his heels up in between strokes, trying to shake out the legs. He's not bending at the waist very much. He's really just using his arms, knowing full well that those last 20 are going to be a quite an unpleasant experience, to say the least. Roman Krenikov has six calories remaining. He's on the right side of your screen in the leader's jersey. The leader, the overall leader, will always be in that white jersey and red shorts. And now Roman going back to the bag. Colton Mertens has the top time at 430.60 seconds. Krenikov right to work. And now Jeff Adler has moved up along with Dallin Pepper. So Adler and Pepper fighting for second. And now Gumitson and Chandler Smith, no rep for Roman Krenikov continuing to work. They'll advance every five reps. Stop, 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 stop. 
Colton Merton's looking like he's going to hang on for a test win here. Krennikov now, final 10 reps. Dallin Pepper on the left, and Jeff Adler on the right, or towards the front, along with Chandler Smith. Colt Mearns is going to get the win. And now Chandler Smith, top of your screen, moving up to challenge Roman Krennikov for first place in this heat. Watch out for Chandler. Chandler Smith looks like he has a faster pace, and it's Chandler Smith edging out Roman Krennikov. And that's Jeff Adler who got in as well ahead of Krennikov. And Bjorven Carl Gumanson is in. Gumanson will take 15th in the test. Koski is across, and now Fikowski is fading. And remember how close it was between second and eighth. Only 31 points separated Brent Fikowski from Jeff Adler in eighth place. So once again, spots two through ten may look extremely different than they did coming into this test. Well, the fifth place position, Dallin Pepper, who came out strong over lane number three, has failed his last rep three times in a row. Now Sam Cornway tumbles across the finish line. Dallin Pepper has may not have gotten in, and he didn't. The Pepper and Spencer Panty get capped. Chandler Smith gets the heat win, 457.11 seconds. That'll be good enough for seventh place in the test, Colton Mertens is going to hang on for the win. Here are the eight men who will be in this fifth and final heat. Overall leader, Roman Krennikov, will be right in the middle of the floor. And as I mentioned, he could take this test off and still be your overall leader. Chandler Smith right now sits in second place. And if this guy wins this test, the roof is going to come off this place. Huge favorite has been knocking on the door for a long time now sitting in second place behind Roman. And we are underway. Final heat, time to beat belongs to Will Morad from heat number three at 805.63 seconds. Will Morad was so quick when he got into the Coliseum, but he is a great runner as well. One minute and 14 seconds on that first 400 meter time check. Roman Krennikov out front of Jonakowski out of Finland. Jonakowski won the opening test here at the 2023 Noble Crossing Games. Third time in his career he's won the first test. Canada's Jeff Adler right behind him. No surprise to see Roman leading out front. This is a guy that is not afraid to take it to the field. G-Shock has given you a chance to win a new G-Shock watch across at Level 1 Seminar and more than 400 bucks in CrossFit swag. Terms and conditions apply as Roman Krennikov, followed by Yonikowski and Jeff Adler. The 12 bar muscle-ups is next for these men. They have to go from a full hang to a supported position above the bar for the rep to count, and they have to pass through a dip portion for pressing themselves up in order for the repetition to count. Let's, let's think in mind of what these athletes have done over the last two days. Six legless cl rope climbs, 100 toes to bar, 50 chest to bar pull-ups. They've done clean and jerks. They've done pig flips. Their grip is absolutely smoked coming into this afternoon's test. Well, Yonikowski, Jay Crouch, and Dowling Pepper, the first three men to the dumbbells. There is Yonikowski. Yonikowski coming in in seventh place overall with 314 total points. Time check from the time to beat, 2.39. Set by Will Morad.
And Jay Crouch and Alan Pepper on the right side of your screen. Pepper is in those army green shorts. Jay Crouch is in dark blue. And it's going to be Roman Krennikov, <laughs> who is off first, followed by Adler, Pepper, Crouch, Koski, Chandler Smith, and now Bjorn Carl Gubinson and Brett Fakowski are off. So it's really tight here after one round. Krennikov came off those dumbbells, shot out like a cannon. And this is the run, Sean. This is the run that matters the most. This is the one in the middle, the one you don't want to do, but you have to do. You don't want to run that fast, but you don't have a choice. Jeff Adler is starting to creep up on Roman Krennikov. Adler comes in in third place overall, and now it's Adler in the lead. Text Jocko to 24672 to get 30% off your order at jockofuel.com. One time use only good through August 9th, 2023. Get some. How about Jeff Adler? The evolution of this kid over the last several years. Really known for his online competitiveness, not necessarily in person. Known for his strength and not his endurance. Now, with years of working on his weaknesses, he is leading the field here in Helena. And coached by his fiance, Carolyn Lambre. And now he and Roman Krennikov will be the first two men back to the pull-up bar. 12 more bar muscle-ups here in round number two. 47 reps is the mark that they need to hit. Scoring hat at the top of your screen. Leader in the heat will be on the far left, and the number in the white box will indicate how many repetitions he has completed. The number in the white box next to everyone else's name will show how many reps they trail the leader. 124 on that 400-meter split. Will Morad's second one was one. 30. Will Morad does have the time to beat. Did it in heat number three, 805.63 seconds. And Adler is now done. He'll be the first man to that 50 pound dumbbell. And here comes Roman Krennikov. So Adler only trails Chandler Smith by seven points for second place overall. Chandler Smith on the right side of your screen. You get 100 points for a win, 97 for a second, 94 for third, and so on and so forth as you work your way down the standings. Sixty-eight reps is what Jeff Adler in those black shorts left side of the screen is looking to hit. Fellow Canadian Brent Fakowski on the left side of your screen as you look at all eight men here in this fifth and final heat. Time check, 529. 529 when Will Morat got done with this and Jeff Adler is way ahead of that. Now here comes Roman Krennikov. Jay Crouch from Australia will be the next man off, followed by Brent Fakowski and Chandler Smith. Jeff Adler starting to open up a bit of a lead over Roman Krennikov, who just rounded the corner. You saw him there in the background in the white leader's jersey. Here's the incredible thing about Jeff Adler. Usually, when an athlete has a deficiency and they focus on that weakness, they pay for it in that strength. Jeff Adler not only has gotten better at endurance and speed and gymnastics, but he continues to get stronger in the process, and that is a prototypical CrossFit Games athlete. This is his fifth individual appearance of the CrossFit Games. Jeff Adler was fifth overall last year. His second finish of his career inside the top five. And looking to improve on that here in 2023. And he will be the first man back into the Coliseum. Twelve bar muscle ups, twenty one dumbbell matches left for Jeff Adler. You can see Roman Krennikov making his way in. Jeff Adler just ran a one twenty seven. Sean, that is the fastest third run split of any athlete today. Krennikov is on to his bar muscle ups. Chandler Smith just got started. Jake Crouch as well, and Brent Fakowski. Keep an eye on him. He's starting to creep up right now in fourth place. But it's Jeff Adler, middle of your screen, who is in the lead. One rep left for Adler, then it's on to the dumbbell. This won't be a problem. 50 pounds on that dumbbell, 21 snatches. Got to go from ground to overhead. That's a lock out his arm for the rep to count. You have to alternate hands in the process. 
102. That's the score that Adler needs to hit to close things out. Now here comes Roman Krennikov in second place. 805.63. That's your time to beat now Chandler Smith in third. Five left for Jeff Adler. Pace pick it up. Final rep for Jeff Adler. And he's going to take the test. Sub eight minutes for the man from Canada. And Roman Krennikov only has a couple of reps left. Chandler Smith is trying to put the pressure on him. Krennikov is going to come in in second place in the heat. And now here comes Chandler Smith just ahead of Jay Crouch. Brett Fakowski is in. And now Bjorn Carl Gubinson with no shirt on just climbing up to the top. This is his 10th straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. Dallin Pepper is done. And now Yonakowski to close out the fifth and final heat. But it's Jeff Adler, third place overall, looking to move into second. As he only trailed Chandler Smith by seven points, and he beat Smith here in this test. Second career win for Jeff Adler, and the only man to complete this test inside of eight minutes. All the athletes, men and women, will be running this together, not competing against each other. The men will be in front, two rows of them, with the highest ranked men in the front, then two rows of women behind them. And we are underway. How about that start? Roman Krennikov right next to Jeff Adler. One and two side by side. The other host is out front as well. Talked to Jeff Adler yesterday. He says he's going to try and win this thing. I find it interesting. I don't think that Roman Krennikov even has a watch on. No gear. The guy's just going completely raw. Getting after it. Roman Krennikov is a front runner. He loves being in front. He loves to lead. Well, there are no markers out on the course, as we know, Chris, so why not just go for it? Just lead the pack and lead the way. Oh, boy. You know what? There's still so much work to be done. I mean, one of the things that everybody is concerned about that is running is the neurological damage from this event, knowing they have to go into an Olympic total tonight. And don't forget test number eight, the intervals that's coming up after this. But, Chris, when you look at a 5K, now, obviously, everyone knows 400. They know how to pace an 800. What's the best way, in your experience, to attack this race? Yeah, they've got an opportunity for about the first 10, 12 seconds with that phosphagen energy system to really go out and get that open air. That's what you need to do and then settle. The key in this event, you must be patient for that 60 to 90 seconds to allow the aerobic system to get warm. The kiss of death will be you're going to throttle too hard and you're going to go over to the limit, and now you're going to end up shutting down and underperforming. Patience. The athletes will make three trips around the circuit here. They'll enter into the North Park at the completion of every lap. Mike Arsenault is down there with more on the fans who will be lining the course. Mike. Thank you very much, Sean. It's currently 73 degrees Fahrenheit, 23 degrees Celsius, so the most comfortable daytime di conditions we've had so far this week. Another cool aspect of test number seven is the access for the fans. The athletes are running right by us through the middle of the RV campground. They'll do this each and every lap, so these fans will get up close and personal. The most difficult part for the athletes will be avoiding the smell of cooking bacon through the RV park. We'll see if they can avoid that. I definitely, for one, will not be able to resist. Okay, uh, Thank you, Mike. That's Roman Krennikov, Jeff Adler, Lazar Jukic is up there, along with Pat Vellner. I believe that's Uldis Upniks there on the So they're right side. now they're right now running up the steepest part of this entire course. The course goes from really the bottom where the road was. It rises about seven meters and then it immediately drops back down again. But if there's a move to be made, that's an opportunity on that hill. Mike mentioned about the it. weather. The weather is really good, but there is about an eight to nine mile an hour wind. And unfortunately, that wind is going to be in the face of these athletes for the bulk of the time when they're up on that grassy section. 
A G-Shock is giving you the chance to win a new G-Shock watch, a CrossFit Level 1 seminar, and more than $400 in CrossFit swag. Scan the QR code on your screen now. Terms and conditions apply. As the athletes are making their way off of that grassy, I would say probably 200, 300 meter trip there, um, they're coming onto some loose gravel, a little bit of loose rock before they find some pavement again. Having run it, I would say the grassy area is about a 300 meter stretch. This loose gravel is about another 300 um, before they make their way back into North Park Stadium here. This, this, this course has been perfectly designed, so the last 400 meters is slightly downhill, and it's gonna encourage these athletes to really push. And that, at the end of this event, could be highly detrimental. You've got to be thinking strategic here. There's a lot of work yet to be done at the CrossFit Games. I anticipate though, Chris, after they get through this first lap, because the athletes know nothing about this course. They see pictures and that's about it. Unless they've got somebody else doing a little scavenger hunt for them. After this first lap, I do anticipate paces to kind of increase a little bit um, through the second and the third lap. Agreed. These athletes have had plenty of people that have gone out and they know the, this course backwards and forwards. They know the actual distance. By the way, speaking of distance, I did uh, talk to J-Mac about the measurement of this course and they wheeled it three separate times. So this course, it's spot on based upon their wheel. I want to... I want to point out what I just saw. Jeffrey Adler is coaxing Roman Krennikov. He sure is. Let's not forget, in event 10 in 2021, it had a three-mile run broken up into one-and-a-half-mile increments with some tow to bar sprinkled in there. Adler took eight. Lap one of three is down for the leaders for the men. It looks like Emily Rolf is your leader for the women. She's ahead of Justin Medeiros as they exit the stadium here at the North Park. Emily Rolf is on the right side of your screen. Emily, no surprise that she's in front here. Absolutely. Emily won the rough run in 2019. She also won event 10, which was the one point mile run sprinkled with the Tota bar there in 2021. Running is her jam. And Rolf is looking to move her way back up the overall standing. She was in a podium position early on, but since finishing seventh in the inverted medley, she's gone 30th, 33rd, and then a 14th last night in Helena. So looking to score some points here in test number seven. You can see the fastest 5K times in the bottom left-hand part of your screen as every division completed this test. 1736.03 seconds from Adam DeJong in the 35 to 39 year old division, the best time that we have we have seen. Now you mentioned Jeffrey Adler as you take a look at Brent Fikowski and Nick Matthew. And you see Emily Rolf is your female leader. Behind her is Noah Olson. Look at Emily Rolf and look how look at her power output. Look at the amount of power that she's able to put into every step and compare it to the men that she's running next to. The men look heavy. They look like they're sinking into every foot strike, almost like they're running in soft sand. That's the difference between the two of them. She is right now on her game. She looks amazing to me. And here's the deal, guys. Okay, in that 2021 event, the event 10, Tota Bar and running, there's no Tia. There's no Haley. There's no Christy Aramo. There's no Kristen Holte. There's no Sam Briggs. But there is a Gabby Magala. But, however, she took first. The next person in line is anybody's ball game here. The second of three laps here for the 5K. Jeff Adler has moved in front of Roman Krennikov. We talked to Jeff Adler last night after he took Helena. And he said that he intentionally baited Roman into going faster than he wanted to in the second round of that test. And he knew in that round, he knew then that he was going to win. 
I had a chance to catch up with Jeffrey Adler after the bike event, and he noticed in the most difficult section of the bike event where you had to push it up that hill before crossing that second hurdle, that every single time on that, Roman got dropped. That hill hurt Roman, and Jeff knows that. He's such a smart athlete. He really is a smart athlete. I mean, I think, Stacy, that was the key to your success, too, right? You were smart. You used, like, your, you took your... those moments at, as an advantage, for sure. Yeah, you were definitely scoping out the field and eyeing your athletes and competitors. Perfect Hydration is the official water partner of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. And the QR code on your screen for more. So what I'm looking for here is, is just look at Roman and the heaviness of every step that he's taking. He's, he, it's, it's lethargic almost. And you want to look at the other athletes and compare who has that spring-like effect that, that they have jumped, they've got that bounciness in them. That means that their neuromuscular system is firing. They're sequencing muscles properly. And that is the athlete that's the threat. I mean, look at Roman's posture. The head is dropping, the shoulders are rolling in. There's fatigue mounting. Same thing with Velma, right? They're starting to hinge at the waist. They're hinging at the waist because they're trying to change the muscle groups that are hell allowing them to run. Top five of the men are Jeff Adler, Yellow Hosta, Lazar Jukic, then Roman Krennikov, and Pat Velder. And Jeff Adler in second place has a 100 point deficit he's got to make up on Roman Krennikov. He can't do that in one test but he needs to start chipping away at it. And right now he's getting a little help from Hosa and Jukic. Chris, what's the first thing, the first thing that you see? I know you mentioned some things that you were looking at, but the first thing that you see that, that lets you know that, all right, someone's starting to struggle a little bit. Well, first of all, what you have to notice is that there's been a dramatic acceleration in intensity, speed. And look who's being driving that right now. Adler is no longer turning around, seeing who's with him, right? He was toying with the field, in my opinion, in that first lap, right? It was almost like a game for him. Now, I think that he's putting on his competitive mask and he wants to go. But remember, Adler's strategic. He's thinking of points. And if he just blows up and goes off in front, the athletes behind him will go, just let him go. So he's trying to coax people because Adler wants the advantage in the next events. There's and your women's leader, Emily Rolf, who at the last check was 11th overall. That's incredible. I ran into Emily a couple of days ago and she said, this is my event. Let's send it down to Nikki Brazier on the field. Guys, you can hear it, and if you pay close attention, it almost seems like the athletes pick up a little speed as they run through the North Park here. The crowd is going crazy as the athletes re-enter the stadium here. And that's part of what makes this course really special here is running through this section of the North Park. But you've got to wonder if that little extra energy boost is messing up some of their plans going into this. Chris, I'm wondering, are some of the athletes a little bit a little bit hurt from the last couple days? Is that affecting their pace? as they go through this 5K? You know, what's interesting is last night after that sandbag lift, I went into the athlete warm down area and they're destroyed. They're so destroyed and this event has scares them more than any of the other events. And then of course they announced box jumps and then the Olympic total today. No, these athletes for the first time have fear. I, I, I want to point out something that we saw in the, uh, the transition here after they passed this and they're now starting the second lap, there's water available to these athletes. Jeffrey Adler was the only one that didn't take water. I noticed that, Chris. I did notice that. Hey, but let's not sleep on Lazar, guys, and Hostick. Yep. Um, you know, Lazar won event 10, which included, again, the, those toes to bar and the three-mile trek. Oldest, I don't know where Oldest is, but he took third in the... Uh, in that event, he took third in the Ruck in 2019, first in the Shuttle to Overhead in 2022, ninth in Helena. So he's got a bit of an engine on him. Maybe he's saving it for this last lap here. Right, same thing Ducic. Ducic last year put the hammer on Adler, right, in that capital event and hurt Adler. And so you have to respect that. We heard Nikki mention the fans in the North Park here. Noah Olson, as you would expect, acknowledging them. 
as he worked his way through the North Park. Olsen making his 10th straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. And I talked to him about a week or so before he made his trip out here to Madison. He said he's, he's focused more on, on having fun and enjoying the experience. We also saw Chandler Smith a while ago. He was lurking behind Velder and Kretikoff. Remember this. Chandler Smith comes in in third place overall. 432 points. So he's looking to put some distance between himself and the men chasing him for that third and final podium spot. You can see Chandler there in the background. Let's send it down to Mike Arsenal out there on the course. Well, our top two men on the leaderboard, Roman Krennikov and Jeffrey Adler. Adler looks very comfortable. He's pretty much led this race thus far wire to wire. Conversely, Krennikov trying to shake out his arms, just gulping air. It looks very uncomfortable, and we're seeing the distance between Adler and Krennikov start to spread out a little bit, and more importantly, starting to see some male athletes get in between them, which is key for Adler to try and trace, chase down Krennikov over these final two days. That's an incredible observation because remember, the CrossFit Games is an endurance competition and you have to have great endurance. And one of the main factors in endurance is your ability to recover, right? It's a major measure of aerobic fitness. And if Roman Krennikov is struggling now, that is going to show his inability to recover going into the next event. Remember, we're only halfway. Now Yellow Hosta has made a move on Jeff Adler for the lead here. But let's not count Adler out there. One Helena last night and applying both shorter distance and longer distance here today with this 5K. My girl Emily Rolf coming in 15th overall after her second lap. Rolf taking second in the ride, 12th in the pig chipper, 7th inverted medley, 30th. The Alpaca Redo, 33rd, Ski Bag, and then 14th last night in Helena. And there is Emily Rolf, your leader right now for the women. Looks great. Just pushing through the floor, just pushing that ground away behind her. And very relaxed, so you know when athletes get fatigued because the shoulders gradually start to rise, and that, unfortunately, that creates a restriction in the leg's ability to move. And behind her, you can see Katrin Davis' daughter, Ariel Lowen, Gabriella, our leader, Emma Lawson. Well, Emily Rolf on the left side, if you remember last year after the, the, the bike to work event, she had to withdraw and had to go have emergency surgery because of a blood clot in her arm. And she, at that point, after that event, she went to the medical crew and said, my arm is blue, I don't know what's going on here. And then that's what it, what triggered the whole surgery and the uh, the scramble that ensued after that. And yesterday, or Thursday after the first test, she went to the medical team and said, look, my arm's pink, it looks fine. Yellow Host is gonna be the first man in, and Yellow Hosta is gonna take the 5K and lock up 100 points. And the rookie looking to move inside the top five here. And here comes Jeff Adler. Adler's gonna finish second. And Roman Krennikov is only going to surrender three points to Jeff Adler as Krennikov found a second gear to get himself across the finish line. And now Lazar Jukic will be fourth. And where's Patrick Velder at? Here, well, here comes Brent Stokowski, Chandler comes Smith. Here. Jay Crouch is going to pass Smith, and then Uldis Ukic is across. And here comes Will Morad. Where's Velder? And here comes Pat Velder. And now, there's Sam Quant. Now, Gilbert Carl Gubinson trying to hold off James Sprague. And here comes Emily Rolf, who's going to take this test for the women. Justin Medeiros is going to try to sprint past Olsen. He's got him. He's going to run out of time to get Bailey Martin. Will Morad is in as well. Uldis Upnix came across. And there's Luke Parker. 
Now Heinrich Hapalainen is coming in. Yoda Koski is in, Ant Haynes. Katrin David's daughter is going to come across, followed by Ariel Lowe. And so a great finish there for Katrin David's daughter. And Emma Lawson is across. There's Sydney Wells, who was the last woman to survive the cut. Danielle Brandon is in, and now David Shirunke. Now Dallin Pepper. And now Emma Carey sprinted the finish. Laura Horvath is in. I believe that was Alexia Williams and Paige Semenza who came in. We are at the 19 minute mark. There's Elisa Fuliano. And now Jamie Simmons behind her. Shelby Neal is in. Spencer Panchik, Alex Gazan. It's Yella Hosta with the top time for the men is now it's Emma Tall working her way into the North Park here. 1639.68 seconds for him. He's going to get the win on the women's side. We're still waiting for the official times for them, but we do know that it was Emily Rolf who came across first, and I believe Katrin Davis' daughter was second. Are making her way into the North Park. Former two time champion. Has competed in three different decades at the CrossFit Games. That's absolutely incredible that she's been able to accomplish that. There's Moritz Feebig behind her. Finishers coming in now. There's Amanda Barnhart. Amanda Barnhart came in at 25th place overall. We do have another cut tonight down to 20. So right now she's on the wrong side of that. But we do have the Olympic total coming up tonight. That's that's a test she should do very well in. And now here's Bailey Rail. We have three men who went sub-17, Hosta, Adler, and Krenikov. And as far as the women go, we are still waiting on their final times to be updated. Now keep in mind, our age group qualifiers, our fastest male, Adam DeJong, in the 35 to 39 age group, 1736. Second fastest male, Caden Hogan, 16 to 17 age group, 1746. Our fastest females come to us, Mira Varga, 14 to 15 age group, 1908. And the second fastest female in my age division here, 3539. And the winner of my age group, Lori Clement, 1957. Impressive times, Chris. Impressive times. Extremely. Now Alexia Williams is coming in. It was Carolyn Stanley who finished earlier. And now Christine Kohlenbrander is across. Yellow Hosta 
was your fastest athlete out of anybody here. And the rookie from Belgium picks up his first career test victory. Emily Rolfe is going to win for the women. And in lane number seven is Jay Crouch. Mentioned him, he comes in in fourth place overall. That's a bit of a surprise. Not many people saw that coming. And for more on him, here's Mike Arsenault. Well, thanks, Sean. This is Jay's best performance at the CrossFit Games thus far in his decade-long career. The reason, according to his team, that he's finally putting the hard work necessary to be commensurate, not just with his abilities, but with the difference of getting to the CrossFit Games and being competitive at the CrossFit Games. Jay attributes it, attributes it to an increase in maturity. We'll see if he can continue his march to the podium here in test number eight. And then Bailey Martin out of New Zealand. Another Pleasant surprise here. Tenth overall after seven tests. He's a former teenage competitor at the CrossFit Games. He was here in 2017 when he finished 13th in the 16 to 17 year old division. Not bad to come out on your first appearance as an Indy and be sitting in this situation. Third and final heat is underway. Yoda Koski has the top time at seven minutes 45.38 seconds. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say these boys, they're all gunning for that time in this heat. And the thing that we're noticing already out the gate is these box jump overs are gonna play a role here. There's not a lot of work and passing that you can do here, but it's a great pace setter. None of these athletes are allowed to rebound this box jump over, so we're all seeing them step down. Some turning and pivoting and some staying parallel the whole time. Six minutes is the time cap here. We just saw a bit of confusion there on Roman's behalf. It looked like he miscounted, started to go to his rower, had to go back to the box and do one more jump. The timing is presented by G-Shock, the official watch of the Noble Cross and Games. And there is Roman Krenikov, who's going to have no problem on the rower. Lazar Jukic is your leader right now. At the 36 rep mark, he will move from the rower on to the nine burpee box jump overs at 48 inches and there goes Lazar who comes in in ninth place overall with 421 points and now Roman Krenikov is moving forward along with Pat Felder and Jeffrey Adler and then Bailey Martin at the bottom of your screen so all the men now on to the burpee box jump overs Chandler Smith who's in third place overall was the last man to get to these nine reps Sean, this heat is so stacked, and this test is so simple by design in regards to just doing work and doing it quickly that it's so hard to, to pick a front runner or someone naturally inclined to have an advantage here. This is literally going to be a slugfest all the way through the finish line. Well, Pat Velder was able to move himself into first. Roman Krenikov ran past the box and got himself on the rower, and everybody in this building is waving him back, and that is a big mistake for Krenikov. Myself included, Sean, I'm literally like waving as if he's going to see me or hear me. I, it's, it's crazy to see him go just past that. It's going to cost him seconds, but I think he can recover. Now, the good news for Roman is he has such a huge lead that he doesn't have to do a ton of damage control here. But Jeffrey Adler, who's on the left side of your screen, sits in second place. And he's been trying to just chip points off of Roman's lead here. So Velder is your leader in this heat, and he is now back to the rower. So one more look at it on the right side. Roman Krenikov runs right to the rower and he had to get to the box of overs and the judge calls him back. But in a test where every second matters, that could be huge for our overall leader. And it, and it will affect him for, for a little bit, Sean, in his mind. Even as he's executing right now, you got to wonder, does it build urgency? Is he going to pre-fatigue himself now on the urge? You had a great point, though. He's got quite the buffer, so he's allowed to settle mentally in that situation, understand. Um, he, he's, he's, in a, he's in a better situation than most. There's our leader right now in the heat, Pat Veller, eighth place overall, and he is back to the burpee box jump overs. Pat Velder has four sixths and two twenty sevens, and then he finished tenth earlier this morning in the five k. And we know Pat can be good for some up and, and down throughout the course of a, of a week or a weekend. But right now he's making slight work of these burpee box jump overs, looking very smooth, getting one foot on top, kicking that other leg all the way through, almost sliding across the box. But Velder only has that one rep remaining, and he will demolish Jonakowski's top time. So Velder is in. 336.41 seconds. A Bailey Martin at the bottom of your screen is fighting with Gorba Carl Gubinson and Brett Fikowski. This is going to be a close finish between the three of them. And 
Gubinson and Martin got across at about the same time. Gubinson edges his out, him out by two tenths of a second. Fakowski's in, Adler is in. Jukic and Krennikov, Hosta, Smith, and now Crouch are done. But it's Pat Vellner at 336.41 wow. seconds, about 12 seconds faster than Yonikowski. Second and final heat, 15 men will be on the floor. Roman Krennikov, he's your overall leader, so he will get to go last and see what everyone else is lifting. And there is Roman. Overall leader Roman Krennikov is going to have to wait for 14 other men to lift. And Noah Olsen is going to kick us off here. Round number one of the snatch. The barbell has to go from the ground to directly overhead without pausing at the shoulders. And Olsen's going to miss his opening lift at 260 pounds. That's right, Sean. It's the fastest lift in the world. they got a 20-second window to execute it. He just needs to start picking up this bar before the clock expires. And Noah Olsen will make that. His 10th straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games saves that lift. And now we go to Colton Mertens at 271. Colton Mertens with a smooth opener there. And now to Will Morat. 266 with no problem for Will. Easy for Will. A lot of these athletes, Sean, are going to make the approach of hitting a weight that builds confidence for them into the second attempt, and then they get to go a little bit bigger. Now we go to Yonikoski, and you mentioned the second attempt. Usually, these athletes get three attempts. How does that change things for them now that they only have two? It, it changes things tremendously. I'm going to be honest. It, it creates a lot more urgency and very, very small margin for error, knowing that if you bomb out and you get a zero, for this snatch, you're going to be several hundred pounds behind your other competitors. We saw Dallin Pepper on the right side of your screen hit 271 for his opener. Now Yonikoski, the man who won the opening test of these CrossFit Games on Thursday. Third time in his career he has done that. That lift will count. Three, two, one, now we go to Lazar Jukic. 270 pounds for Lazar. And Serbia is good. And he hit it. Sean, one of the questions I asked Coach B when he was up here with us in the booth, uh, a renowned Olympic weightlifting coach who's been doing it for 50 years, he said, you can throw all of what we know out the window when it comes to a set percentage of how to open because these athletes have been through so much so far in the last two and a half days, they really have to base it off of how they feel. 250 is good for Bailey Martin. Representing New Zealand here. And now Yella Hosta. An impressive rookie out of Belgium won the 5K earlier today to pick up 100 points. Currently sits in eighth place overall with 524 points. And he will make it. And that brings us to the man known as the professor, Brent Fakowski, with 286 on the bar. Brett still got time here. Get back on the bar, go through his ritual. Couple deep breaths, a little shake. And unable to make it, so Fukowski is facing some pressure now. The group of Carl Gubis in the 95 might, it's clearly not 100%. Just trying to get a score on the board. That's right. Strategic move by his part. Accumulate a few pounds, stay in the fight, do the work minimum so he can stick around and compete. Now to Jay Crouch out of Australia. 245 pounds for his opener. Jay did a great job there staying composed, being patient through the pool. This is a fast lift, folks, if you're watching from home. But it's necessary to be patient as you stand off the floor and build speed the taller that you get. Here's Pat Vellner, who's a crowd favorite here. Currently sits in fourth place. Misses his opener. Pat's got to finish the pull here. And there he it is. It. And now another crowd favorite, Chandler Smith at 280. And that is good for Chandler. Trying to hold off Vellner for that third and final spot on the podium. Jeff Adler 
Second place out of Canada. He'll open at 276 pounds. And that is good for Jeff Adler. He only trails Roman Krennikov by 59 points. He shaved 41 points off that deficit over the last two tests. And Krennikov is at 265 trying to get the crowd behind him here. And Jeff's eyes are directly right on Roman. Seeing right through him. And that is good. Round one is done and we will go back to Noah Olson. Great lift there for, for Roman and a great way to kind of set the precedent for some momentum going forward for him. Fifteen pound jump here for Olson. It's a big lift for him if he can stick this type of load after these two and a half days. And able to fight through that. And stand it up. Ten years in the game for Noah Olson, Sean. There's Colton Mertens at 286 to take the lead from Chandler Smith. It looks like he gave a little shake of his head there. Gonna go again here. I won't get it. There's 286 for Will Morad. This will be the top lift we've seen so far. And Will smokes it. And, and, and these athletes, as we're watching this, you, you gotta understand they, they they have more in the bank. It's just that we're seeing them play the game, build confidence for as they go, and they're also dealing with a tremendous amount of fatigue. They gotta make sure they get numbers on the board. Dallin Pepper at 288, 12th place overall, and he will stick that. And that's the new top lift. As we work our way through the second and final round here of the snatch portion of the Olympic total, the clean and jerk is next. And here goes Yonikowski at 280 pounds. Yona's really going to have to punch under the bar here in order to stabilize this load. 280 is going to come crashing back down towards the ground if he doesn't. Not able to make it. Now it's Lazar Jukic at 277. And that is good. Lazar does a phenomenal job of receiving the bar overhead with his hips directly under the load. It helps him stabilize and get, get it right up. Three, two, one, left. Bailey Martin is good at 250, now at 277. And that is good. Great lift for Bailey, an athlete we saw compete here at the CrossFit Games as a teen athlete. Three, two, one, lift. Yellow Hosta. Up next, 275. We talked about this in the last seat, Sean. If they miss it behind him, there's a chance. You just got to stabilize it, stick it right where he wants it, directly over the middle of his foot while the bar's over his head. Well, this will count if Hosta can save it, and he cannot. Now, Brett Fikowski, who misses opening lift, will make 286. Folks, if you're watching at home, that was his happy face. <laughs> and now, Bjorben Carl Gubinson, who is clearly dealing with something, is just trying to get a score on the board here. And this breaks your heart for an athlete like BKG, someone that is certainly a fan favorite, 10 years at the CrossFit Games taking the time to soak it in and, and show the crowd some appreciation. His rookie year was in 2014. That was the last time he finished lower than ninth. Now here's Jake Crouch at 265 pounds. Jake Crouch in fifth place overall with 555 points. He's only one point back of Pat Vellner. So Vellner going up to 281. 10 pound jump. And that is good for Pat Velder. Big lift for Patty to there. And now we go to Chandler Smith, the man trying to hold off Velder and hang on to that third and final spot on the podium. 293 pounds. And that is good for Chandler Smith. He says to his coach, I should have gone up in the crowd. 
Now Adler at 282. We're going to take these athletes' heaviest lift in this portion and add it to their heaviest cleanager for their final score. And Adler sticks 282 pounds with ease. Now overall leader, Roman Krennikov. At 276. And that is good for Roman. And now we move to the clean and jerk portion. Now we're going to narrow the hands in and segment this lift into two portions. The athlete's got to get it to their front rack position, receive the bar, stand it up, and then press or jerk the bar overhead. 315 for Noah Olsen. No, resorting to a power clean. And that is good for Noah Olsen at 315. Now we go to Colton Mertens at 326. Three, two, one, lift. Wasting no time getting that barbell overhead. That's known as a quick jerk right there. Reduces time under tension. The bar stays on your body less. Sometimes allows for more explosive jerk overhead. Here's Will Morat. His opening attempt at 315. Dallin Pepper at 326. Good save by Dallin. He caught that bar far back in his heels. We go to the man from Finland, Yonokoski, 316 pounds on the barbell. And that is good. Lazar Jukic up next at 317 pounds. Wow, great clean by Lazar. It's his third career appearance at the CrossFit Games. He's finished inside the top 10 in both of them. And right now, 10th place overall. Sean, I say that was such a surprise. I know he was struggling getting bars into the front rack position early this weekend from the spill he took on the bike in test one. It's good to see him recovered enough to be able to still clean and jerk heavy weight. Bailey Martin at 315. That's good. Former teenage competitor here at the CrossFit Games back in 2017. Making his individual debut. We go to Yellow Hostad at 295. Another rookie at the CrossFit Games who put on a show earlier for us. Winning and taking home the 5K. Now we go to Brett Fikowski, 330 pounds for the professor. And that is good for Brent Fikowski. And that puts him in the lead with 616 total pounds. Jordan Carl Gubitson just again trying to just get a score on the board here. Move to Jay Crouch at 325. Three, two, one, lift. Jay Crouch, 325. That will count. Pat Vellner going to 327. Pat's going to have no problem with the clean. Sometimes that overhead position gets away from him. He's got to jump the bar up and back. Uh, he's got it. That is good for Felder. That will move him into third place. And here is Chandler Smith, whose father, Rod, went to the University of Florida and played football there and blocked for a guy you may have heard of, Emmett Smith. I think I've heard of that name before. Chandler muscles through that at 325. 
And we get to Jeff Adler, who's going to 340 pounds. That lift puts Chandler Smith in the lead. 618. And Adler is good. Routine lift for Adler is one of the strongest men within our community. He typically approaches these strength tests by just doing what he needs to do to finish where he wants. Roman Krennikov to close out round one at 330 pounds. Wow, some saved by Roman. And that will count for Roman Krennikov. Second and final round here. And Jeff Adler is in the lead right now in this heat as Noah Olsen goes to 330. And the jerk is good for Noah. Great lift by Noah. Colton Burns up next at 340 pounds. Now we're going to Will Moore at 331. <laughs> Dallin Pepper, fourth place right now. We're going to add to his total. Easy money. That is good. Great lift for Dallin. This test feels that way. A lot of folks watching at home, Sean, are going to assume, like, oh, he could have put more weight on there. He could have gone for it. But boy, you always got to figure out if the juice is worth the squeeze on those couple extra pounds. You got to get a sure lift. Now, uh, Yonikowski to close out at 336 pounds. Second and final attempt for him. Not going to have enough time to get another attempt yet. So here's Lazar Jukic. Total of 594 right now. Moves up to 330 pounds. He was good at 317. So he'll add 13 more to his total. Up to Bailey Martin. He goes to 346. Martin making a big jump. A 31 pound jump here. Good clean there by Bailey. Dip and drive. Big jump here for him. Oh, and he sticks it. That is good. Now to Yellow Hose at 315 pounds. He's going up 20. You gotta love the sound effects from Yellow. Won't be able to stick the jerk. Now we get a Brent Fikowski, 343 pounds for Fikowski. He's going up by 13 from his last successful lift. <laughs> Gotta love the emotion. Brent getting fired up, bringing the crowd with him. There's Grover Carl Gubitson, who's not going to make a second attempt. He just put 95 pounds on the bar just to stay alive in this competition. <laughs> Jokingly trying to get the crowd behind him as he knows he's not going to make an attempt. And we'll go to Jay Crouch next. That's right, we're nearing the final line. You see a lot of jumping around, a lot of preparing their bodies for this heavyweight. This lift means everything to these last five. That is good for Jay Krauts. The top scorer in this test was from the prior heat was Jack Farlow, who put up a total of 701 pounds. That's not in any danger right now. We're fighting for second place here. There's Vellner at 342. A 15 pound increase from his first lift, and he will make it. Right now, that ties him for 10th place in this test. Chandler Smith at 335. A little split clean action. And that is good for Chandler Smith. Unorthodox, but effective. 
The summary of his Olympic weightlifting career. <laughs> now Jeff Adler at 360 pounds. This is a big lift for him right now, tied for 13th in the test. Looking to move up here. I'm surprised by how big this jump was, Sean. And that is good for Jeff Adler. And he takes the lead in this heat with 642 pounds as Roman Krennikov has got to hit this. And he will. Wow. And with that, test number nine is in the books. And Jeff Adler is going to take a tie for fourth unofficially. Krennikov listed at 16th unofficially so Jeff Adler is going to shave even more points off that lead on the field and Jeff Adler and Roman Krennikov will be lining up right next to each other in lanes 10 and 11 and for more let's go down to Mike Arsenal. Thank you very much Sean you mentioned that this is the final day of competition the season actually started in February with the CrossFit Games open over 300,000 people signed up for the open for an opportunity to make it to the CrossFit Games after the cuts last night we're left with 20 men and 20 women 0.01% of the athletes that we started with this is the tip of the spear and I for one cannot wait to see who will be crowned fittest on earth later today. There is Jeff Adler, who since finishing 15th in the inverted medley to close out Thursday night, has yet to finish lower than eighth, and is now just 13 points back of that man. Roman Krennikov, who has worn the leader's jersey ever since the second test. We are underway. We start with the seven muscle-ups. And Sean, I talked about how this is not the test Roman would want to see coming in this morning. And the reason for that is if there's one hole in Krennikov's game over the last couple of years, it has been events that have high volume muscle ups. If you look back at the Rogue Invitational last year, very similar format. And had seven rounds of seven muscle ups and then goblet squats with some running in between. He finished 17th out of a field of 20. Guess who got third? Mr. Jeffrey Adler. Just about every athlete getting to the bags at the same time. Now they have to put the bag over, move themselves over. The way to think of this is anytime they encounter something in their way, they have to go over it. That includes on the way back to the ring. So Justin Medeiros is out front along with Pat Melner, Adler, and Roman Krennikov. We talked about that event at Rogue this past October. Guess who won that event? Mr. Pat Vellner. We're at the North Park. An unsung hero yesterday as far as his competition goes. Sitting in third overall. We're at the North Park. We're on Sunday. That screams Pat Vellner. Yella Hosta and Pat Vellner will be the two men who get back for round at number two. First, Adler and Krennikov and Yonikowski are right behind them. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. What do you got? No wasted movement. This is an extremely fast test, faster than people may think. These are long straps on the rings. You can't rush the muscle up. You'll get out of control. Same with the bags. And if I can quote the great Ian Malcolm from Jurassic Park, must go faster, must go faster. <laughs> there are 10 reps in every round, 50 total score repetitions. As now Pat Velner is off. And Sean, we looked at the test itself. It's got two elements in here. It's got the ring muscle-ups and it's got the bag. But there's a third element that isn't on paper, and that's the run. That's the carries. They are going the length of the North Park field down and back every single round. So these elements in between the logs actually have a dramatic impact on the fatigue in this test. Now Pat Vellner and Yellow Hosta, along with Jeff Adler and Roman Krennikov, are leading the way. Yonikoski is there as well. There goes Vellner onto the third and final log that's five and a half feet tall the logs increase in height from four to five and five and a half feet and that'll close out round two for Pat Vellner who's coming off a tie for 12th in the Olympic total but prior to that he won the intervals his first test win of this competition and he has been making his traditional climb up the leaderboard after putting himself in an early hole Again. Well, not just won the interval, Sean. He dismantled the intervals. There was nobody even close to Pat Vellner. And we talked about the speed of this test. This is a sub seven minute or sub 10 minute test. So when you look at intervals, about the same pace. When you look at Helena, about the same pace. So no surprise to see Vellner in the lead so far. 
Round three of five has begun. G-Shock is giving you the chance to win a new G-Shock watch, a CrossFit Level 1 seminar, and more than $400 in CrossFit swag. Terms and conditions apply. Now keep in mind, with just 20 athletes in the field, the scoring has changed, so it is easier to make up points in bigger chunks. For a win, you get 100 points. For second place, you get 95. For third, you get 90. But in that same vein, Sean, it's also easier to lose massive amounts of points, and that's something that Roman needs to be very careful of. Though he's hanging tight with your top guys here, so that's a good, good look for Roman. That's two Canadians leading the way, Pat Velder and Jeff Adler, right next to each other on round three with that 150-pound, 68-kilo bag. The final bag, the red bag, increases to 200 pounds. And at the very end, Sean, not only do you have to get the bag over the height of that log, which is five and a half feet, which is about the same height as your top athletes in this field, they have to carry the bag across the finish line. Velder and Adler lead. Yellow Hosta sits in fourth, followed by Roman Krennikov, and it's Jonah Koski, the man on your screen right now, who is in third. Koski won the opening test back on Thursday. It's the third time in his career he has won the first test of the CrossFit Games. Let's keep in mind the totality of the gymnastics pulling movements these athletes have had to go through over the last three days. Day one. 50 chest to bar pull ups, 100 toes to bar, 16 bar pullovers. Day two, 36 bar muscle ups, six legless rope climbs. I mean, they're going into their fourth round. That's 28 muscle ups they're having to do so far with seven more to go. Pat Veller only has two left at the 37 rep mark. He'll head back to the bag, and Roman Krennikov is falling off the pace here. And if this stands, Jeff Adler will erase the remainder of the deficit he has to Roman Krennikov. It could be your overall lead. Keep your eye on Yonikowski just to the right of Adler and Vellner. He is keeping pace with them. And remember, Yonikowski actually set the test record worldwide in the weighted muscle-up test for semifinal. So this guy has some incredible pulling endurance. Well, Yonikowski now is starting to gain some ground on Vellner and Adler and has pulled even with them. So we have a three-way tie for first at this point. Yellow Host is right behind them. And Roman Krennikov there in the white and red shorts headed to the second log. Yellow Hosta's biggest weapon here is actually the sandbag. His cycle rate on the muscle-ups will not be as fast as the other guys, but he's so tall, he just has to throw it right over the top. So that's where he's making ground on the other three athletes. Yonikowski has now taken the lead ahead of Vellner and Adler. Now, in saying that, Sean, we're coming up to the last round. Now the bag goes from 150 to 200 pounds. And if Yellow Hosta is only six to seven seconds behind these top three guys, not only is he gonna have the advantage on the logs on the back end, but with that weight and his height, that actually could be the difference maker for Yellow Hosta. Well, Chandler Smith is on the left side of your screen, and he is trying to hold off Pat Vellner for that final spot on the podium and only leads him by 16 points. And right now, Chandler Smith is in ninth place in this heat. Sean, I don't know if you... Yona Koska and Jeff Adler are off. Yona Koska now hoisting up the 200-pound bag. Adler is right there with him. Here comes... Yellow Hosta. Watch Hosta. He's going to be able to get it over the log easier than anybody and get over easier. Well, I say easier, and he <laughs> biffs it right there with the first log. And now Adler is slightly ahead of Yonikowski. And remember, they have to go over that final log and carry that bag across the finish. So Adler is now in front of Yonikowski and staring at a test win here, and maybe the overall lead. Roman Krennikov right now is in fifth place, tied with Pat Veller. Koski is over, Adler has the bag up, and Jeff Adler is going to win and possibly lead with two tests remaining. But check on the right side of your screen, Sean. Roman Krennikov actually should be getting a top five finish here, so that is a great finish for what would have been a bad test for Roman. The Hosta is in, which means Krennikov is going to take fourth. And that means that Jeff Adler just picked up 30 points on Krennikov and should lead him now 
by 27. That's unofficial going into test number two. Velner, Medeiros, and Pepper have all finished as well. And Chandler Smith is in. Now keep in mind that race between Chandler Smith and Pat Velner. So Velner's going to finish fifth. But I misspoke about Adler. He's going to pick up 15. So he'll lead by two. That's unofficial. So Pat Velner finishes fifth. He's going to earn 80 points. Chandler Smith takes ninth. That's a difference of 20. So right now, unofficially, it looks like Pat Velner has moved himself into a spot on the podium. Here comes Uldis Utnix. Well, Colton Mertens, I believe that is Bailey Martin. Sorry, that's Jay Crouch who's out there with Colton Mertens. There's Noah Olsen. Now, Colton Mertens is walking up to a log that is an inch taller than him. It is absolutely incredible. What Burns is able to do out here, and it speaks to his fitness level. And there goes Colton Burns, and the crowd always appreciates his effort as he is in. And Jake Crouch is done. And that will close it out. But Jeff Adler looks to have a razor thin lead on top of the overall standings with now two tests remaining. And Pat Vellner in lane four on the podium now and trying to stay there and wind up with a bronze medal. Two Canadians side by side. And Adler said is that he needed Pat to help him get some separation between him and Roman in the previous test. And there's the left foot of Roman Krennikov wearing the lifter. With See how we can get through this. Eight minutes, 30.61 seconds is the time to beat. Brent Fikowski is going to be the first man to the 30 double unders. There's 32 reps per round, eight rounds total for 256 scored reps. And Roman Krennikov in the middle is going to be able to do this on one foot. In the loudest cheers we've had all weekend, Sean. Brennikoff is, again, the good news for him. He has a 150 point cushion as far as staying on the podium is concerned. So if he can just do some damage control here to finish these tests, he still has a chance. Brent Fakowski, though, is your leader right now. Now here's the thing coming into this, Sean, is that Brett Fikowski still has an opportunity to maybe put himself on the podium again. He's having a great weekend so far, but when you look at a test like this, we've got heavy sled pulls, we've got heavy double unders. Brett Fikowski won the last test at the CrossFit Games and had both of these things. He had one of the fastest test ones from semifinals across the world with a heavier, harder sled pull. So, Brent Fikowski is one of those sleepers in this test that could take it and move himself into a podium position. Jordan Carl Gumitz is on the right side of the screen. He's also dealing with an injury. His back has been bothering him all weekend long. And Gumitzin right now is seventh overall. Well, he took 10th in the previous test this morning after basically getting dead last in the total last night. Recipe for success. Is delivered by trifecta. What are you watching for here? Uh, they, this is a hot tub pump session if I've ever seen one. You've got double unders, you've got P bars, you've got the pull. It's just taxing everything that has already been smoked for these athletes. But the long rope is the hardest pull that you're going to have. So you got to make sure is that you focus on that first and fifth one. And Roman Krennikov is still on his first round of double unders. And he's able to get through it. And I think for Roman is. You're going to take last in this test. Don't offset that by maybe making your good foot worse by too much work here. Keep doing the work, keep trying, get last place here. We've got a different style test coming in this final event, so 
get yourself to the next test to close things out. The Brent Fikowski and Yonikowski are currently battling for the lead here in the second and final heat. Fikowski on the right, along with Gumanson, who's in third. Yonikowski is on the left, who sits in second place right now. Pat Felder and Dallin Pepper rounding out the top five. Felder trying to give himself some breathing room as far as the spot on the podium is concerned. They're looking at time to beat, Sean, and it's eight minutes and 30 seconds set by Lazar Jukic in the previous heat. There's eight total rounds in this. That is less than a minute and four seconds per round to get that best time. And what does that mean? That means precision. You cannot have a mistake here. You can't stumble on the P-bars. You can't break on the ropes. You can't get your rope tangled up in the sled. There is no room for error in this test. But Brett Fikowski is going to be the first man to hook up his second 345-pound sled. Yonikowski's going to beat him down the floor. And Bjorgen Carl Gumitsen, his 10th straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games, he has not finished outside the top 10 since his rookie year in 2014. And despite being banged up, it looks like that streak might continue. Bjorgen Carl Gumitsen, I mean, we had heavy sandbags this morning, Sean, so whatever he's dealing with, he is dealing with it like a champ. But this fifth round, Sean, this is going to be the hardest sled pull of the entire set. The reason being is that that sled is back off of these white lanes. You can see the white lane that these athletes are in. That's a much slicker surface than the black rubber that it is. And this is the longest length of rope they have. So it's not much, but a big start can get them a big lead going into the rest of that pull. Look how fast the Kowski sled move once he hit the white. Brett Fikowski in the lead right now, ahead of Bjorgen Carl Gubitsen on this pull. Yonikowski's just about done, too. Man who won the opening test of the 2023 Noble Crossing Games, third straight, or third time, I should say, in his career, he has won the first test of the games. It's Brett Fikowski in the lead now. He's already back to his double unders. And there's so many transitions in this test. Where do I put the rope when I'm done? Do I get the rope off my platform? How much time do I spend doing that? How do I lay my rope down after I'm done with double unders? All these little meticulous little transitions that does that plays to no one better than someone like Brent Fikowski. Chandler Smith is trying to hold off Brent Fikowski right now. Smith sits in fourth place. He's only 47 points up on Fikowski. And with the number of athletes we have now in these 20 person heats, place differences mean a lot more points between the athletes. And Brent Fikowski just cleared that red line and he's on the left side of your screen, upper portion now back to the parallel bars. 256 total score repetitions here. Fikowski has two more pulls to go. And look how close it is still with him and BKG. It's a matter of seconds. And now we're getting into the pressure rounds. Round seven, round eight. No misses. I'll send it down to Mike Arsenault. I had a chance to uh, catch up with BKG before test number 10. And the issue is he actually has an injured psoas muscle, which runs along his hip. And that's giving him referral pain in his back. It started at semifinals. He wasn't able to lift heavy whatsoever until 10 days before the games. Unfortunately, he had a flare up before test nine last night. The Olympic total feels much better today. And we're seeing that play out here on the competition floor. Pat Felder currently sits in third place in this heat. Felder in third place overall, he's 111 points back of Adler for the top spot in the overall standings, but he's only four ahead of Chandler Smith. And we saw this in the previous heat coming into the final round. As you see Brett Fikowski, top part of your screen, still in the lead, is that making sure the rope isn't dragging over the top plates of your sled. If you look at Fikowski's currently, it is laying on top of the plates. We saw in the previous heat, Will Morad, his rope got stuck and actually couldn't pull the sled to the plate itself. 8.30.61 seconds. That's your time to beat from Lazar Jukic in heat number one. And here goes Fikowski looking to demolish that. Fikowski using his length, leaning forward, leaning back, letting his body do the pull. And Fikowski's done. 
One final parallel bar traverse trying to get the crowd behind him as Brent Fikowski will win Test 11. Pat Vellner is second. And now Bjorn Carl Gubinson looks to be the third man across. He got a no rep. He had to restart. Now Yona Koski is trying to track him down. Koski at the far end is going to get in ahead of Gubinson. But Dallin Pepper is done. And he is in. And Jeff Adler is still out there. So Pat Vellner is looking to carve a significant amount of points off Jeff Adler's lead here. Adler is through. And now Jeff Adler is across. Now let's talk about the race for the podium. And Chandler Smith is still out on the floor, and he had a 47-point lead on Brett Fikowski. Brett Fikowski just took the test win. So we may see Fikowski leapfrog an inch closer to that podium position. Well, Adler's going to take seventh. And he was the last man to finish. The yellow host is getting ready to finish up. Sean Chandler has a whole another round to go. This is his eighth round. Bailey Martin came across. He finished 11th in the test, and now Hosta is in. That leaves Chandler Smith and Roman Krennikov. The only two men left on the floor here. And what's Chandler Smith on his final pull as Roman Krennikov is on his third of those eight rounds, just trying to gut through this. Thing. Smith is across. And now we will have to wait and see how many points he's going to surrender to not only Pat Velber, but now Brent Fikowski. And here comes the crowd behind Roman Krennica. I applaud the effort. Just be careful. You have another test to go. Jeff Adler, who has been competing with Roman Krennikov this entire competition out there trying to help Roman through this. There's three minutes left for Roman. And as you mentioned, Chase, he has another test to go here. One. Yeah, and it's the inspirational that this is. I'm glad he's trying, but he's in there already smacking his calf. Like, let's not make a bad situation worse. You've done plenty of work to move on to the next test. And now Adler trying to get the crowd behind Roman Krennikov, and now he will move to the pull for the fourth time.
I'm gonna help people know that he's still halfway too. Saluted by competition director Adrian Bosman on the left side of your screen. had a lot of emotional moments here inside the Coliseum, and this one is right up there with the ones that we have seen play out here at the Alliance Center. Mikowski coming in, needed to make a move. Down there on the leaderboard. Can't think of a better test to come up for Brent Mikowski and bank 100 points to his total, but he needed some help. Overall, he's behind Chandler Smith with that fourth place position by about 47 points. But you have Roman Korenikov, who basically been the leading in the white jersey all week long. And when you think about what these athletes sacrifice and have to go through, what they choose to do, put their lives on hold and make this their entire life to be here, how long it took Rowan to finally get to the CrossFit Games last year, Let's go down to Mike Arsenault with Roman Krennikov. Roman, this is one of the most emotional moments I've ever seen on the Coliseum floor at the CrossFit Games. What was it like coming out here with your injured foot and having the crowd behind you, your competitors behind you, as you approach the last part of that test all by yourself on the floor? I just want to be a hero for my son, so he can He wants to be a hero for his son. He just wants him to see him a fight till the end. Just one last question for you here, Roman. Where do you summon the strength to come out here and put a performance like that with one test to go on an injured foot when you can barely walk, you're hobbling in the warm-up area? Well, <sighs> I think it's stupid to fall if my one hand is working. I'm going to continue working. I can do it on one and I'm going to do it on one. All for the fans. 
He he been working really really hard for months, and he thinks it would be very silly to stop now. He can do things on his one leg, then he'll continuously doing it in one leg. Um, everything for you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Roman. Here are your 10 men who will be on the floor for this final heat. Jeff Adler will be in lane number five. Keep an eye on him. Echo Thruster final. Bringing it home in the best way possible, Sean. This is the CrossFit game, so why not finish off with a little couplet? Echo Bike Cows and Thrusters, 21, 18, 15, and a 66 foot overhead lunge to the finish. It's time to get primal. Nothing tricky, nothing sexy, just good old fashioned hard work. And you gotta want it to win it, Sean. That's all it's gonna take. And there is Jeff Adler, Pat Vellner, and Brent Fikowski. All of them have a chance to wind up on the podium. We are underway, 21 calories here on the Echo Bike. One when Calza open up, you can see Roman breaking his left foot earlier this morning. He's just doing everything he can to stay in the competition. Stays in the competition, not a withdrawal, so his points can still matter when you look at the overall ending of the leaderboard. But Sean, just a heartbreaking moment for someone who wore the white leader jersey for days here at the competition and in that fight with Jeff Adler for that first place position. It wasn't that long ago when we were talking about how much was he going to win this thing by? He looked absolutely unstoppable. And then the slide began last night. A couple of mistakes. Adler was able to shave 87 points off that 100 point deficit. Now Jeff Adler is your overall leader after what happened this morning. And I don't want this to take away from anything that Jeff Adler has done the last day of competition because he has been earning every single point he's gotten on the leaderboard. His performance all weekend long, the holes that he's shirt up of the last five years, to be able to take second in a 5K, fourth in an Olympic total, first in a classic CrossFit test that was Helena Friday night. Jeff Adler is the real deal. Keep an eye on the top of the screen. The leader's name in this heat will be on the far left of our scoring hat. And the number in the white box will indicate how many repetitions that man has completed. The number in the white box next to everyone else's name will indicate how many reps they are behind the leader in the heat. Now Chandler Smith has taken a break and he's back on his thrust is Brent Fikowski leading the way here along with Dallin Pepper and Yonikowski in the light blue shirts. And now Jeff Adler getting to the bike for 18 calories and the weight on the barbell is gonna go up to 135 pounds. And that's the biggest challenge of this test, Sean, is that the bike cows drop by three, but nothing really changes on the bike. However, on the barbell, you only drop three reps, but you add 20. We go from 115 to 135. 135 to 155. So if you're a stronger, more powerful athlete and you can handle the barbell well, you are going to have greater success towards the end of this test. Get your official 2023 Noble CrossFit Games gear and score a bonus gift with purchase. Scan the QR code to redeem and view terms and conditions. Time to beat Sean said in the previous heat, Sam Quant 648.70. Timeout here is at the upper left corner of your screen. So all these athletes, so they're racing each other. We had 10 athletes take this test about 20 minutes ago. And Dallin Pepper and Jay Crouch. Crouch at the top of your screen out of Australia. And Dallin Pepper are the first two men in the barbell. Now Brent Fikowski is there. Here comes Jelikowski, who won the opening test of these 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Koski in the light blue shorts. 
Back on Thursday, it's the third time in Kosey's career he has won the opening test of the games. The Cows he coming off a test win previously to this. That's what vaulted him into the fourth place position just a few points out of that third place spot. And now Fikowski has broken it 72 out of the 119 total scored repetitions here. He's got to get to 78 before he moves back to the flight. Broke at 12, has six more reps. Again, 18 reps at 135 pounds. Dallin Pepper is back on the bike. He's in the lead. Jonakowski is behind him, followed by Brent Fakowski. <laughs> 15 cows on the Echo bike in this last couplet as Adler gets to his bike in the center part of your lane. The bar bells you see there in front in all red, that is the final bar. They'll do 15 reps at 155. And then after that, Sean, 66 foot overhead walking lunge to the finish line. There's that 155 pound barbell that awaits 15 final thrusters after these calories. And Jonah Jonakowski in the middle of your screen, who is still your leader. Jeff Adler does not need to be in much of a hurry here. He has an 86 point lead over Pat Vellner for first place. Velner looking to finish in second place on the podium. As Dallin Pepper has advanced to the barbell for the final time at the bottom of your screen, Yonikoski looks to be the next man done. And Koski, if he wants a shot at winning this test, he better reel Dallin in because he's chasing down one of the bigger, stronger athletes in the field. When it comes down to an overhead walking lungs, lunge, strength in the shoulders, and length definitely matters. Jay Crouch is on the very far left side of your screen. He's on the thrusters as well. Now here comes Jeffrey Adler, your overall leader, starting his set of 15 thrusters at 155 pounds. The athlete has to go into a full squat, so hip crease has to be below the knee, and then they have to squat up. Press the barbell overhead. Janikowski on the right in the blue shorts, just past the 10 rep mark. Broke at 12. We've seen a lot of athletes break at 14, take a rest, do their 15th one, and go straight into the lunge. Jake Crouch is on the left. He currently sits in fourth place. Dallin Pepper's on the right. He's got one more rep to go here. Looks like Pepper at one rep. Kowski looks like he has a couple. Adler, four reps to go. Now Dallin Pepper taking off down the floor on the final lunge here. 11 scored repetitions here on this track. And 648, top left corner of your screen. Time to beat, set by Sam Quant. So Dallin Pepper, Lazar Jukic, bottom of your screen. Yona Koski, Brent Fikowski, and that man on the left, Jay Crouch, are all on the lunge. Bjorgen Carl Gumensen has finished up his thrusters the Dallin Pepper trying to track down the top time from Sam Quan and win this final test Jeff Adler your overall leader is on the lunge as well so Pepper is in and Pepper is going to get a test win here to close out his 2023 Novo CrossFit Games Jeff Adler in the middle of the floor. Inching closer to his first ever title of fittest man on earth. There is a new king in the north. His name is Jeff Adler, and he is the fittest man on earth. and Lazar Jukic have also finished here. And here comes Pat Felder. And that may put Pat Felder on the podium along with this man, Brent Fikowski. There is Carolyn Lambre. It was Jeff Adler's coach and fiance.
trying to do some math in her head, I think, to figure this thing out. But Jeff Adler had a comfortable enough lead. And now Bjorn Carl Gumitsen, his 10th straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games and looking to finish inside the top 10 again. Who knew that uh, Canadian would look good in red and white? And Roman Krennikov is still going to work. And the crowd is getting behind him once again. Here comes Jeff. And that's going to do it. Jeff Adler. When everyone else thought this thing was over, he kept fighting. And he's going to be crowned the fittest man on earth. To the fittest fans on earth, I give you your fittest man alive, Jeff Adler! Jeff, back in 2017, you were at the CrossFit Games as a volunteer on the event team. Six years later, you're the CrossFit Games champion. So what would 2017 Jeff's reaction be to this moment? Keep pushing barbells, man. <laughs> Why not? It's still, it's still unreal. It feels uh, very weird. We've been working hard, and uh, it pays off. And I'm just going to take some time with, uh, with my people that are here with me and try to soak it in tonight. Well, speaking of working hard, I know it's not just you that puts in a lot of hard work. Your fiance, your coach, Carolyn Lambre, who was also a volunteer here in 2017, what has her support, her coaching, her partnership meant to you for this moment? That's why I'm here. There's absolutely no other reason. She's the one that found me trusted that we could work hard through the years and make it. And uh, her dream got true today. And I'm so happy for her. She worked as hard as me. Um, I know you're a proud Canadian. We have the flag right here. Let's open it up. You're the first champion international champion of the CrossFit Games since 2009, the first Canadian champion since 2007. What does that mean to you? That means a lot. Uh, change is good. Uh, we're we're going to try to keep these colors up uh, on the leaderboard. I know I'm not alone on the, on the podium tonight uh, with this flag, so we'll enjoy it together for sure. My last question to you. For the last two years, you've told me your secret to recovery is the coos, the hot tub. And you didn't have a hot tub at the hotel all week long. So what is the new secret to recovery that creates a CrossFit Games champion? Well, there was no hot, so we had to go cold, cold plunge all uh, after every event. So we, we, chilled, uh, we chilled in the, the ice baths.
the True North Strong and Fitz. Congratulations, Jeff Adler. Thank you. Thank you.